This episode is brought to you by Pepsi Wild Cherry. Pepsi Wild Cherry is bursting with delicious cherry flavor and a sweet, crisp taste that gives you more to go wild for. Getting wild may look different these days, but whether it's opting for a solo Friday binge watch or a big night out, everyone can indulge in their wild side with Pepsi Wild Cherry, also available in Zero Sugar. So grab a Pepsi Wild Cherry and get wild. background. Always good to have a studio audience here. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, good morning, everybody. Welcome to another edition of The Carton Show. That guy right there is Mr. David. All right, All right. All right there. Of course, we've got <laughs> NBA Hall of Famer, Mr. Hey, Tim Hardaway. And of course, we have Super Bowl champion, Thank Thank Mr. You. William Thank Anthony Aloysius Cologne. And we got a great show for you today. Tons of stuff over the weekend. Nothing more important for a lot of you than the tournament, but that's not the lead story from the weekend, at least the way I see things. Because this weekend, while the tournament's raging on, while NBA teams are jockeying for position, and while we're trying to figure out if the Otani interpreter even knows Japanese, let alone, <laughs> let alone anything else more than that coming up, of course, in just a bit, uh, the NFL coaches and general managers get together, as they do every single year, and they take the photograph that then becomes kind of wallpaper in their offices, one of all the GMs, one of all the coaches, one of everybody together. And I took a look at the photograph that was put out, and, man, I love it. I'm in love. I am in love. Now, that picture alone doesn't tell you a damn thing. Other than you got a group of men standing together saying, I don't want to take a photograph, but go ahead, take the picture, right? But when you zoom in, Timmy, when you zoom in, you see my head coach. He's dead center, Robert Sala, yeah. in the light blue golf shirt, yeah. swolled up because he's, yes. been, he's been working out, and his eyes are closed. Oh, did it, yeah. You know why? Because he's bored by these trivial oh, things. Gotcha. Because he knows what all the other coaches know. I'm good to go. Yeah. The New York Jets are locked and loaded to make a run to the Super Bowl. <laughs> and when you're that confident, Timmy, you take naps during <laughs> photographs that you don't want to participate no, in. No, no, no. Some guys, yeah. they close their eyes and they get snapped. And sometimes that just happens. They, no. They, but you know what? They're supposed to tell you, yo, Hold up. Let me look at it. Let me see if his eyes was closed. Let me clean see if everybody's eyes. Yeah, yeah. they clean you up some. But they, that guy said, no, I'm going to leave it. Let I got a team closed. photograph from Golden State with you, Mully, and uh, Richmond. Your eyes are closed. No, my eyes. Well, well, no, you no, knew full well no. we're going to win 50 games this year. It's going to be no problem. <laughs> but I saw that. It made me happy, Willie, because that guy's uber confident. I spoke with him a few days ago. Sure. And he's like, look, we stay healthy. We're winning a boatload of football games this year. So look out, NFL. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, everybody knows Robert Sala runs the stadium stairs before games. That's kind right. His mantra is always in shape. But there's a couple coaches missing in that picture. What's the question with Mike Tomlin, Sirianni? They're in the picture. We, we, just, in the we just didn't focus in on them. And the okay. only reason Nick Sirianni wouldn't be in that photograph is because he wasn't invited. Because <laughs> oh, even wow. the NFL knows he'll be the first guy to be fired uh, this season if the Eagles get off to a bad start. So why take the picture, Willie? <laughs> he should take the picture with all the – Madness is coming is that out of that right? room? The yeah. other guy that wasn't in the photograph was Mike McCarthy because he's yeah. the second guy <laughs> who's going to be on the hot seat when things go south. So I saw the picture. All I want to tell you is I'm not overreacting. As a Jet fan, the fact that my coach is napping during that photograph tells you exactly where the Jets and are. He, I like the idea, if I was a Jet fan, I like the idea that my head coach can beat up your head coach. Yes. It just feels good. Yes. It just must make you feel good as and a And now Jet that fan. Mike Vrabel's out of the league, my head coach can beat up every head coach <laughs> in the NFL. He was the only guy I was worried about yeah. if it ever came to fisticuffs. Uh, the other big thing from the weekend, obviously the tournament. We'll get into the tournament with you. Not a lot of great games in the second round as opposed to obviously That's the first true. round. Yeah, that Houston A&M game was the best of the lot uh, yeah. with a buzzer beater three to go into overtime. And then Houston prevails over A&M. So I'll we'll show you that coming up in a bit. But the Otani story will take a major turn today as uh, Shohei Otani is expected today. Obviously, with the use of a different translator, I'm assuming at least. But he is going to publicly address all these reports about, you know, the former translator gambling, using his money to do it, transferring money potentially in an illegal fashion, all that nonsense that's coming up. And we will get into that later in the show because today is the day and the first day that Otani will be on the record claiming 
what he believes took place as opposed to what the conjecture has been out there that he may have helped a friend out in dire need uh, financially. So we got all that stuff for you. We got the tournament. We got a lot of NBA Let's stuff. Go. Because one of the greatest players of all time might miss the playoffs, Timmy. Uh -oh. That's true. Uh -oh. to that. That's true. And Josh Allen and the Bills are already uh, you know, ruffling their feathers a little bit uh, towards the criticism that they have underperformed in his tenure. We'll get into it right after this. Good morning, Woo! brother. All right, come on. So, all the head coaches get together, and uh, for some reason, they're coming after my guy, Sean McDermott, and the Buffalo Bills, and questioning the level of success that Josh Allen has had in Buffalo. Here is what McDermott had to say, quote, what's left for Josh and for all of us is to take that one more step that we need to take to say we haven't had success or Josh hasn't had success, yeah. I think would be kind of narrow-minded. I completely agree, Craig. You too, right? Well, I mean, <laughs> it's we're we're gonna over you you know, think the word success now, right? I'm not sure who's coming out saying they haven't had success. If anyone says that, they're stupid and they're dead wrong. They've had success. Thank they've, you. Right. they've won four straight AFC East championships. They've been to one AFC championship game. They've been to the playoffs. Uh, uh, you know, uh, you see right there what they've done. Uh, so you can't say that they haven't had any success. They just haven't had the level of postseason success that you would think a team with a badass quarterback like Josh Allen would have. But if I'm Sean McDermott, I'd be careful, man, because I think this is a referendum on Sean McDermott this year. And I've been saying for a year and a half now that the 2024 season would most likely be Sean McDermott's last if they get overtaken by the Jets, which they will, this particular year that he will be the scapegoat for it. They damn near fired him a year ago when the 9-11 comments came out and then everybody rallied around him and the Bills, to their credit, played their best football over the last five weeks of the season where they were 5-0. and But it's to me, this is a guy being uber sensitive to any kind of criticism at all because no one has come out and said that the Sean McDermott, Josh Allen Bills have had no success. Because if you said that, you're a clown. They've had success, and frankly, McDermott gets credit for turning the franchise around because they went a decade without making the postseason. And then, of course, you get Josh Allen. McDermott does a great job early on, post-Rex Ryan. But now the question is, why haven't they been able to get back to the Mount Olympus top? And the answer is obviously because Patrick Mahomes exists in the world. And, yeah, that, the classic AFC divisional loss with the 13 seconds on the clock. They did lose the AFC Championship game and blew a 9 nothing lead and lost by two touchdowns to Kansas City back in 21. So the question is, when you have a badass quarterback like that and a great football town and fan base and you've only been to one championship game and you've never been to the Super Bowl with this regime, people start questioning, do we have to make some changes? That's a fair question. Saying that they have had no success is just foolish. Yeah, the bottom line is a lot of these Bills fans, these current Bills fans, don't remember the bad years, right? They don't remember this team was always squeaking and try, barely trying to make a wild card, can never draft in the top ten. They were 6-10 and ten one year, 7-9. and nine. They were always in the middle of the road. And also, they got to give themselves enough grace because they went through the Brady years. Now they're going through the Patrick Mahomes years. So in their eyes, it's like, when are we ever going to get there? Because once Brady left Tampa, they was like, Pat, we're in. We got our quarterback. We got our coach. We're ready to roll. Then Patrick Mahomes was like, uh-oh. No, I'm here. Thank you very much. <laughs> and so now there's a lot of saltiness. Overall, you got also got to understand, being, being a Bills fan right now, you're frustrated because you have everything you need. You have the quarterback, you have the head coach, and you have people who are wanting to play for the Buffalo Bills. There's not a damn thing in Orchard Park outside of Buffalo Wings, right? So now you have free agents who want to go there. You talk sure. about Leonard Ford, who actually re-signed to go back to the Buffalo Bills. You talk about Von Miller, obviously a Hall of Fame type talent, restructured his contract to stay in Buffalo. But so here, here's, it's, the it's ultimate, weird. here's the ultimate deal, right? They went 17 years, 17, without going to the postseason. They had Greg Williams, they had Mike Malarkey, Dick Geron, Perry Fuel, Chan Galley, Doug Marone, Doug Marone. Rex Ryan, yeah. and Anthony Lynn. They had all those coaches. Not a single one of them ever got the Buffalo Bills to the postseason. McDermott comes in and bang. 2017 postseason, 2018, not so much. Yep. 2019, <laughs> 20, and then from that point on, postseason every single year. 
So I'm not sure who Sean McDermott is alluding to. I've never heard a single person say that Sean McDermott and Josh Allen, that combination, has not been successful. They just haven't gotten to the ultimate goal, but you bet your ass they've been successful. But I think after the division loss, the div- division playoff loss, and when you talk about wide white by Tyler Bass, a lot of true hope, Bill, like a loyalist, feel like we're never going to get there, yeah. especially on the Sean McDermott. This team was 6-6 six six at one point, fired the OC, and then they turned it around. The luxury in which you could turn around your season mid-form and t- change the whole offense to say we're not going to Stephon Diggs, we're going through James Cook with Josh Allen is a miracle in itself. But here's the deal. Timmy knows this. It's like when a lot of teams, for me as a Knicks fan or if you're a Cavs fan, you couldn't get past Michael Jordan. That's right. Now, you played out West, so it's different, obviously. But it was the uh, you had great basketball Uh, teams who couldn't get past Jordan. You went to the Heat, obviously, and the same scenario. You know, this team, the Buffalo Bills, they've lost three out of the last four years in the playoffs to one guy. Yeah. It what, feels, it feels like the Knicks and Patrick Ewing and Michael Jordan. Yes, that's, that's, what, it feels, that's it's exactly like, what it is. The Bills have had success, but they just bump into yeah, Patrick Mahomes exactly. year after just year. Just the wrong time because wrong I would have taken – look, the Knicks went to the playoffs when? I mean, went to the NBA Finals, didn't win, obviously. No, when? No, no, when no, Jordan no, won no, the round, right? Yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, and, of course, going back to 94. <laughs> but so, it, to me, that's a great comparison. You lived it yourself in the NBA. There's sometimes these special dudes – who you just can't get past, whether yep. that's one-on-one franchise-wise or that's more globally where nobody in a conference can get past one dude. You know, the Bills thought they had uh, it won against Kansas City when they were I think we all thought that. Everybody <laughs> thought. <laughs> and then Patrick Mahomes did what Patrick Mahomes normally do. He went in there, had his team confident, and he was zipping the ball all over the place. And the defense trended right after him and said, yeah, we could do this. And that's the way Michael Jordan is. You think that you have him on the ropes. You win at one game at his, at, his, at his home. And then you think that you're going to come home and win two games and then go up 3-1. No, no. He goes up 3-1 and then you back where you was at yep. when you, before the season started. That's a quick question. Started. Kenny Smith has always told the story that he used to uh, mock Jordan that he couldn't go left. Uh, back in the Carolina days, you he can't could. dribble left, you can't he go could. left. Did you ever talk smack to MJ about going left? No, because at that particular time, I didn't know MJ. But when I came into the league, yeah. he started going left. When I, was with, when I was living in Chicago, growing up in Chicago, we knew that Michael Jordan couldn't go left. Mm. He dribbled the ball going left with his right hand at one particular time. <laughs> right. If you're watching the um, NBA All-Star game in Seattle, he dribbled the ball the length of the court going to the left side with his right hand. He never put it in his left hand. So – he kind of knew that he needed to work on his left hand. So during the offseason, he started working on his left hand and going left and just shooting fadeaways, going left and doing a lot of things. So, uh, you know, when, when, when great players, they understand what they need to work on, mm-hmm. and he worked on his craft to get it better. And then and after about a couple of years, because you got to understand, um, Kenny Smith went to – College with him. That's right. And he saw him in college. And he's the one that tells the story right, that exactly. he, they'd play one on one. He couldn't go left. And he would trash talk him. Right. You can't go left. No, he couldn't go left. Yeah. He he could not sucks. Go left. Yeah. yeah. Can't go Michael left. Jordan. Can't go left. So I blame Kenny. Yeah. I blame Kenny Smith for Michael Jordan learning how to go left and beat my Knicks in the playoffs all those years. Anyhow, much more on that, I'm sure, another day when we do tales from the from the wood, which we uh, Timmy sing coming up later this week. In any event, we have one of the greatest punches I've ever seen in uh in in, uh, in Mortal Kombat, and we've got Mortal first Kombat. Mortal, Mortal Kombat. Kombat. Mortal Kombat. Mortal Kombat. Mortal Kombat. Arguably the greatest punch I've ever seen. You want to see a dude's nose get displaced? Oh, We're no. the show that's going to bring it to you. More in the tournament, tons of more football coming your way, including the Kansas City Chiefs making a very interesting personnel decision Ooh. that I can't quite figure out. Before we get to first of football, and the Kansas City Chiefs, I'm a big uh, fan of the fight game. Yeah. And I oh, saw yeah. one of the greatest punches to a dude's schnoz I've ever seen in my life. Uh, this is a kickboxing match over the weekend. I'm just going to let it play right there. Oh! oh. oh. Broke his snap Wait a minute. Oh. <laughs> uh, I think one more time. The Yaga. uppercut catches him. Oh. And that's what There's we call no ear. a broken nose. And by the way, <laughs> to break it like that on an upper cut and to send the nose halfway across your right, face, right. that's a hell of a punch right there. So did he keep fighting? No, the fight ended. He went okay, down right yeah, after yeah, that. Yeah, the yeah, fight yeah. was a wrap. Soft. Yeah. Apparently he couldn't Soft. breathe. Soft. <laughs> <laughs> Can I get it one more time, please? That, that one was more solid. time. No. One more time. Right up the cut. Ooh. Ooh. Oh. 
Oh, yeah. Now, that's a lot of rapping on a dude's hands, but they're kickboxers. And uh, call them straight. Yes. I, I call them straight. I would have like, hey, I got your news. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's go to first in football and start off with Jacoby's got you with Kansas City's interesting personnel decision. Go ahead. We have some big news from the Super Bowl champion Kansas City Chiefs. They have traded Legereus Sneed to the Titans for a third-round pick and a swap of a seventh-round pick. I find this very curious. Craig Carton, explain to me why the Chiefs said goodbye to one of their best defensive players. Well, uh, to me, this tells you that they were just not committed to at any point giving him the long-term deal yeah. for the money that, yeah. you know, top five, top ten cornerbacks get in the league. That's the only thing I can think of because they had already franchised him, meaning he was going to make about $18 million, give or take, a couple shekels there this year. And they trade him basically for nothing. Mm -hmm. You really get nothing back in 2024. You get a mid-round pick in 2025. Uh, and to me, that's, that's troubling if I'm a Kansas City Chiefs fan because the notion was in our attempt to three-peat, which no team has ever done in the history of the NFL, we're going to come back with all our best players. Chris Jones gets signed, makes sense. Well, yeah. after Chris Jones, who's clearly their best defensive player, I don't think there's an argument that LeJarius Sneed was their best defensive back. Obviously, he made the biggest plays in the postseason, most notably the play against the Ravens and Zay Flowers right there uh, at the goal line to stop a touchdown and to stop Baltimore from getting within three in the AFC Championship game. And I thought, yeah, of course they bring Sneed back. He'd be the biggest in-demand quarterback in the open market. What's uh, What I can't figure out, and I've been trying to, is – why they got so little in return for him. Mm. Because this is a top-quality defensive back on the right side of 30, and yet they did not get a significant return. So that I don't understand that part. I also don't understand why they were so quick to get rid of him and not wait until we were getting closer to the draft. Like, there was no benefit to them to do this deal over the weekend. Mm. And if you're going to move him... You know, you just had the coaches and GMs all together. So, you know, guys are talking about possible deals and trades as we get closer now to the draft, which is essentially a month away right now. Why not wait a little bit, see how things break out for other teams? I got to believe there's another team out there, and I would say an NFC team as opposed to the Titans, an AFC team that's rebuilt themselves in an amazing fashion this offseason and now are a real threat to A, compete in their division, sure. and then maybe beyond that, if Will Levis, of course, is a legitimate quarterback going into year two. But for the life of me, I can't figure out how this makes the Chiefs better. Because they have depth, and they have young depth. And you talk about having Trent McDuffie, Justin Reed, and Shadarius Ward in the secondary. The reason they let him go because of the depth they do have. Now, the reason why they let Chris Jones go, him being the most important piece, because they didn't have an heir apparent to Chris Jones. There was nobody that was going to have the impact that Chris Jones had on that roster, bottom line. Also, the market is dim for cornerbacks. Uh, There's only two cornerbacks in the league making $10 million, right? And one of them is not right now, Shadarius, uh, excuse me, uh, Darius Sneed. Overall, if you talk about what the Kansas City are worried about is go to, go to 2000. 2025, they got to resign uh, uh, Creed Humphreys, uh, Trey Smith, their right guard. Sure. They got to get another receiver. So they got to spend their money wisely, locking it all up on a 27 year old quarter uh, corner who's going to want 28 million. This doesn't make but sense. But I would tell you this all the pressure now goes on Trent McDuffie, who's a 23 year old. Yep. Yep. And you could argue maybe he's a better cover cornerback. I, I mean, maybe not. But no, put, Sneed is the best. He had Justin Jefferson. He had Tyreek Hill. He shut them all down. But now you just put the pressure on a 23-year-old in McDuffie, who's a very good player, obviously, to now become the best defensive back you got. I just don't see how this makes them better. And if the idea was, well, we needed the money to get Jones, I would have understood that. But you got Jones, oh, yeah. and you had him franchised. So let's go. Like, to me, this isn't about winning a fourth and fifth Super Bowl. This is about can I three-peat? I'll worry about 2025 when I get to it. I, I completely agree. And, and Jerry Sneed made plays that won them games. Sure. They yeah. won games because of his plays. That Ravens game, that one play, I think they were down 10 at the time. Yeah. And they go in and they score that touchdown. Big play. That is a huge play. That is, that is a season-saving play. Yep. And, and from my mind, I don't understand why you wouldn't franchise him play another year, try to three-peat, and then worry about it later. Well, so they did franchise him. They just decided that we don't want to spend $18 million bucks after we had made the move to franchise him. Right. Then, of course, you have to get rid of the tag so they can trade him. But it also shows you that there's a movement now in the NFL that we're going to become aware of in the next couple of years, which we've already seen with running backs, 
We're now going to start devaluing cornerbacks. 100%. Mm. Right? We don't want to pay a cornerback who's 29 years old, even though he's a rock star. We're not paying that dude 18 million bucks. And we're sure as hell are not going to give that guy a four year contract for 100 million bucks or north of 80 million dollars. So you're now going to see a devaluing of big time contracts for late 20 year old cornerbacks. And to me, I think, you know, you'd kind of. You'll bite off your nose to spite your face a little bit there as well. Moving on to second in football, Packers quarterback Jordan Love. He had some interesting things to say about his expectations Worried. for next season. Worried about Here what? is what Jordan Love had to say. It's a great feeling, man. We're, we're all very hungry for, for this upcoming year. But like you said, man, the confidence from, you know, top to bottom is there. You know, the organization believes that, um, you know, it's the perfect time to, to – have a chance to win a Super Bowl this year. Next year, we're going to do it. Ain't a, there's no more we're a young team. There's no more of those um, what ifs. Like, people know what we're about now, and um, obviously, you know, we'll have that target on our back. People are going to want to beat us. So, um. so there's Jordan Love setting the bar at Super Bowl. Woo-hoo! Are the Packers Super Bowl contenders? <laughs> no, they're not Super Bowl contenders. I appreciate the confidence. So, yeah. Like, there's two things. There's one, appreciating a kid's confidence, because I want my starting quarterback to feel yeah, that way, exactly. that we have a chance to make the Super Bowl. But then there's the you know, real world, where I live in from time to time, <laughs> and that is I want my quarterback to say it, even though it ain't true. The Green Bay Packers have come in third place in their own division this year. Oh, that is Craig, not the oh, Craig, now, Craig, Craig, Craig. I'm not telling you they're going to come in third. I want to be clear. They could come in third place. Timmy oh, Chicago yeah. Bears are going to be better with Caleb Williams and all the other oh, pieces they added. Really the Detroit unhinged. Lions won the division last year. I'll give you Minnesota. I'll take them out of the mix because I'm a kind, giving guy. But there's a good chance those Green Bay Packers come in third place. Now, maybe that's good enough to get as a wild card, but they are not making a run really, um, to a Super Bowl. You know what that's makes crazy me, talk. You know what makes me want to barf at my butt? I know. The fact that <laughs> you <laughs> you do things, you say things without – it's only – like you come – you, you're tone deaf. This, think about what Green Bay's dealing with right now. This is the post Rogers era. They yeah. had no idea this young man was going to be as good as he is in his is first he that year. Good? They walked into yes. the San Francisco yes, game to, with all intent to beat the San Francisco 49ers yeah. and had him all the way down to the wire. Yeah. You're talking about a happened? young quarterback right now yeah. who's even killed on face and delivers time after time. Yeah. After week nine, his numbers shot through the roof yeah. with this young receiving court. They had the biggest offensive line in, in all of football. On top of that, one of the key acquisitions of this free agency was Xavier McKinney. They showed up the mm-hmm. safety position. This team is primed and ready to go to, to the what? Super Bowl. Bottom line. I bet you win oh. a division first and then worry about winning well, the Super Bowl. Well, well, what are you that? talking about? Well, they went about up on your Cowboys how about that? in the first round. And by the way, I know they gave the Cowboys a good run. I'm not saying they didn't until this your is, guy, Jordan Love, Decided to throw the ball across his body in the middle of the field, which could have been one bad decision. By three we all different make bad decisions, like yeah. that shirt you wore this morning. But at the end of the day, yeah. that's not the issue. <laughs> but what I'm saying is, what, what I'm saying is, Woo-hoo. this is the second youngest team. This is the youngest team in football, and okay, they Willie. did it this year. Uh-huh. Okay, Willie. This shirt, horrible shirt. Okay, Willie. <laughs> horrible shirt. Okay, Willie. I horrible agree with Willie. Yeah. I agree with Willie. That's right. I'm not talking about your shirt. I'm not talking about your shirt, but it is bad. But anyway, I agree with Willie. But Hang I up with on Jordan Love. Jordan Love. I think. Yeah. He has a lot of confidence. Yeah. He saw what his team could do. I think that he uh, he wants to. He's telling him. He's yeah. telling his team. Look, we we go to the uh, all the way to the Super Bowl, but we got to come in ready. And I'm putting the onuses on y'all right now. Yeah, yeah. Let's go start it. less thinking about it Good. right now. So go you're picking it. them to win the division. They're yes. gonna beat the Lions. No, no chance. Yes. They're better than Detroit right now. No, they're yeah. not better than Detroit. You're wrong. That is incorrect. Yeah, no, I'm talking about this. Good. Talk about this. Do what you got to do. Wait, 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 wait. This is March. No. This is March. No. We not. We haven't even had I'm the draft yet. Timmy, I'm calm with down. you. These guys Just, are crazy sometimes, right? But you brought it up. Right? You brought it up. <laughs> I'm just answering his question. Yeah, yeah, I sat yeah, him on my own business. You never mind your own business. Look, I would say this. If Jordan Love gets better from the way he ended last season, I think he will. then the Green Bay Packers have a legitimate franchise quarterback. I think and, he yes, they could win the division. But... I also saw Jordan Love play every game this past year. And you can't say, I'm going to forget about the first eight games <laughs> and only concentrate on the next nine. Because that's not real. Let's take the entire. Why isn't it real? Because you got to take the entire season. Why? Why? When they made the playoffs. Why? They beat look, 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 look what the Buffalo Bills did. 
Yeah. You know, until, 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 until my man um, I love that point. said what he said, then they had to rally behind the coach. That's right. And other than before that, Fair they enough. was going fears away. Fair enough. Now, I think Timmy makes a good Very point. Good point. That the only thing I'd come back on you and Timmy is that, you know, at least with Josh Allen, I've got a body of work. I know what Josh Allen is. That's unfair. You're talking right. about a quarterback who, before the season, Aaron Rodgers was the quarterback. This is his first full season. Yeah. His one start was And he had eight games where he wasn't that great. Yes. Yeah, his first year start. Okay. You know, let's, so a, let's just tell the easy, whole story. It's easy to say Josh Allen and have belief in him. The man has been to multiple playoffs and has showdowns with Patrick Mahomes. I'm Mahal just and sharing. Burr. It's like I take a cold apple pie out of but the fridge. Saying, you can't it say, don't taste very but, good. But, but you when compare, I microwave it, it tastes but, good. But, but you're not comparing apples to apples. Did they go to the playoffs? Yes. Green Bay, yes. And who they beat? We know who they beat. They beat the where, Dallas Cowboys. Where? In Dallas. Okay, so w- w- <laughs> look at his look proof. At, and had, had the proof. Niners with their gloves on yeah, like this. Yeah, and the Niners, Niners with Jordan Love yes. across the body interception. They're going to win that game. Okay, yes. but thank you. No, Bottom line. They, they could have. They're going they to win have. that game and tie that game up with their field goal. Well, I'm glad it's we all, always one bad I'm pass. glad we all agree on one thing. Oh, one fumble. If it wasn't for Jordan Love, they would have advanced in the playoffs. Jordan Love's their quarterback. But they did make the playoffs. Your words are mine. They did make the playoffs, and they had a chance – they beat the Dallas Cowboys in Dallas when everybody thought Dallas was um, going to be going. Human resources, I'm being attacked. I'm being attacked. <laughs> uh, I'm, in, I'm in an unsafe work environment. I'm being attacked. That, that's all. I know how to, I know how to if, 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 if politely say, I know how to shut both of them up. Can I give him a basketball? He gets a football. Good. Do what you do. What else you got, Jacoby? Moving on to third and football, let's talk about one of your favorite receivers. Who? Brandon I. I love him. There yes. are reports that they will get in an extension <laughs> after the NFL draft. Is there any chance that the 49ers lose the services of Brandon Ayuk? I, I've said from day one that they're never going to walk away from Brandon Ayuk. He's too damn good. Yes. And I don't care if he is Mike Tomlin's son or not. Uh, the reality <laughs> to me, or if, he, or, or, if he even, or if he just looks like him. Uh, but I do want to see the Mamor Povich one day because I want to find out. <laughs> I am not the father. In any event, what, you know, people have this notion that it's hard to keep really good players because of this you know, silly little thing called the salary cap. And San Francisco, like other really good teams and franchises, prove year after year, if you've got the right people managing the cap, you can sign everybody. And you can re-sign everybody you want. So the notion that a team that's built to win right now and for the next couple of years based on the age of their stars, uh, would just walk away blindly from a great talent like Ayuk has never made any sense to me. I'm not an insider with San Francisco. If those people are telling you that the, you know, kind of the word around the water cooler is that they're already working on an extension and they can get it done post-draft, I buy that because that makes sense. Turning your back and walking away from an all-world talent like Ayuk, knowing that Debo's had injury problems, McCaffrey gets leg problems throughout seasons, yeah. and he's the guy i got to be able to count on if and when those guys do go down, which they do. I, I look, makes sense to me. And the fact that Pittsburgh may or may not have interest in Brandon Ayuk, so what? Every team would have interest in Brandon Ayuk because he's a great wide receiver. He's also making, what, $14 million bucks this year uh, in that uh, your fifth-year option. And I think San Francisco will do everything in their power to keep him long-term because he is not a good wide receiver. He is a great wide receiver, and you don't let those guys walk out the door for nothing. I agree with you. I think the biggest fear that San Francisco 49ers are dealing with is the fact that they don't want to do what the Titans did by letting A.J. Brown out the door and yeah. get his best years with the Eagles, right? They don't want to see that happen. However, they're handcuffed right now because between Debo, Kittle, and CMC, and now understand this, they got Brock Purdy You got two more years to worry about Brock, but you're right. Yeah, but Eventually. you got to understand, you, him making the NFC uh, Championship and making the Super Bowl, yep. He's going to want his money now. Yep. And so they're going to have to figure that out. So I don't think they have the money to pay him. I can see them walking away from him. Um, and I wouldn't be surprised he lands somewhere like the black and gold. Where's my damn top? Yeah, no doubt. So, oh, 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 here we oh, go. really yeah. came in an argumentative move today, yeah. which is uh, <laughs> very troubling for me since I stand or sit next to him. Coming up, we'll get to uh, some NBA. So you have to kind of pay Timmy for something. And we'll find out, is it possible if the Golden State Warriors are not playing postseason ball? It Has is. that ever happened? in Steph's career Ooh. right after this on FS1. Time now for the segment we call Slam Dunk or Air Ball. Yes. Timmy Hardaway, mm-hmm. my man right there. Let's start you off. The Golden State Warriors 
uh, sitting in the 10th spot right now. Yeah. Uh, lost last night. Have lost back-to-back -back games. The Houston Rockets have now won eight straight games. Yes. And they're only a game behind the Golden State Warriors for the last spot. So slam dunk or air ball, the Golden State Warriors will miss the playoffs this year. Slam dunk or air ball? Slam dunk. You know, oh, I, I, oh. I, I'm sorry to say that, but uh, you know, it's not looking good for the Warriors right now. They they in, they look they in a slump, and they play the Rockets this week on yeah. Thursday. Oh, so it, it, it's not looking like it's good for the uh, Warriors right now. They're not playing well. And then Draymond Green come out and says, uh, "Who cares if 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 the uh, Rockets take on uh, right take us out." He's not. He's not worried about the Rockets. Yes, you should be worried about the you Rockets. You gotta be worried about you the gotta, Rockets because yes. you're breathing down yeah, your neck right, right down now. your neck. That's right. I mean, they looking at you right now. It's like we coming for you on Thursday, all and right. they playing well. All right, number two, uh, the San Antonio Spurs suck. We all know that. But <laughs> yep. Victor Wambayama Mama has exceeded expectations as a rookie. Is that a slam dunk? Or is that an air ball? That's air ball. I'm oh. sorry, ladies oh. and gentlemen. That's an air ball, you know. And first, we put a lot of expectations on this kid, which, like uh, Popovich said, that he wasn't going to exceed his first year, which he hasn't. You know, uh, you look at his footwork. Some of his footwork is not where you where you want it to be at right. coming overseas. But he has made a lot of strides. He, you know, he run down. He blocked his shots. He, you know, when you get... You know, five blocks, five uh, steals, uh, 30 points, you know, 20 rebounds in the game. Uh, that's great. But you know what? He's on a bad team right now. Worst team he's in basketball. Not, he's not looking like, I mean, you know, nobody's really paying attention to him. And you look in, people are more paying attention to Holmgren than he, what he is. But I think it's a, it's a uh, air ball. Uh, his expectation is a little bit higher, and I don't think he met him. I should mention Detroit's got the worst record in basketball. They got the second worst record in basketball. Yeah. Uh, so they'll be fighting for the number one overall seed. Number three. Well, no, you don't get that. Go ahead. It's ping pong. Yeah, they're still going to get it. <laughs> ping pong balls. We need envelopes that are cold. The yeah. corners bench is all we need. Come in on, NBA. Greg, stop that. <laughs> stop that, Greg. Stop That's how we got Patrick Ewing. <laughs> Patrick and I remember I cut out the newspaper headline the next day when it said, God is a Nick fan. <laughs> yeah, God was a Bulls fan, right. unfortunately. All right, here we go. Number three. Nobody wants to play Fast. a healthy Knicks team in the playoffs. Oh. Slam dunk, Slam dunk or air ball? Slam dunk. Yeah. yeah. They healthy. They go all the way to Eastern Conference Finals, and they could uh, – uh, try to beat the uh, Boston Celtics, but they got to stay healthy. Like I said before, without Randall and without OG. O OG, you're not going. You're not going far in the playoffs. I'm sorry, you're just not going far. I mean, everybody's been mad at me. I don't think they will win uh, a series without those two. Stop it. I, I, I really don't think so. Y'all need those two guys to come in and, and, and be healthy to win a series and to go all the way. I think OG's East. actually more important for the next than Randall. Oh, no question. I, no question. But I, I'd rather have both of them of there. Of course. Of but course. you know what? OG is more important than Randall. Yeah, no Knicks, doubt about the, it. The Knicks are 15-2 and two with OG in the lineup, so we need right. them. Yes. They also beat the Nets uh, over the weekend. At the oh, wait, 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 wait. That's right. <laughs> Double okay. digit win the, for the, the Nets. The, 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 the Nets are like San Antonio and and, and uh, Detroit. A wins are wins. Okay. Right. Yeah. Wins are wins. <laughs> the Nets but, but, but you know what? But last week you was talking about they was going to three or two. Uh -huh. God, they trending backwards. It's okay. They, they it's okay. Now. They was I got an easy last schedule. Week, and then they got, and you still uh, got. But you you don't have OG. You don't have Randall. I'm a game out of the three, and I got an easy schedule coming up. But you fall. That's real. Yeah. That's but you real. Fall. That, so I, look, 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 look at you and the magic. Right. The magic is the magic blew down. to get the Kings. The magic had a the chance magic. to yeah, take the blew four it. seed and own it, and they threw it away this yep. weekend. Yeah, they They're did. mixing out a four seed. Cleveland's walking their way backwards because they're afraid of tough games. The Knicks <laughs> take the three seed, and they'll have an outside shot for the two, which I don't think they'll get to. But what you said first is the slam dunk. It's nobody not, wants the no, Knicks. No, no, nobody. If they're healthy. We, no, nobody. If y'all help. If y'all are healthy, thank you very much. <laughs> All right, next one. You'd rather start a franchise with Anthony Edwards and not Jason Tatum. Slam dunk or air ball? Air ball. I have to, I have to have Tatum. Okay. Oh. I love Tatum. I think that um like like he said before, when um when Kyrie and Hayward left, they let these kids grow and they have grown up tremendously. And I and I, I take Tatum right now over Edwards because he's a little bit more experienced. He understands what he needs to do for his team. He's a leader out there on the court. And, um, you know, I just think that he's a better talent right now 
than Edwards is. There's, a, there's a championship or bust thing going on with the Celtics right now. Oh, no question. It's championship it, 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 like, yeah, that's, it, that's, You've been there so that's many the mindset. times. That's mindset. Eastern Conference Finals, Eastern yes. Conference Finals. Get to the Finals. Yes. Like, it is time to win the championship. Yes. 100% right. Uh, I, I'd probably start with Jason Tatum, though, because uh, dude does everything. Yeah. And he has led you know them what, very Edwards? deep. I love Anthony I'm not, Edwards. No, I'm not, I'm talk, we're talking about right now. Yeah, right, right now? now. Right now. Right now. I want right. Anthony Edwards. He's okay. a killer. He's not, ready. Really, um, He's not ready. I don't know He's about not ready. that. We'll see. I mean, if we we'll have this conversation in three years, day. then maybe Anthony Edwards is the guy. Yeah, I'll we'll say find out. Place, right, I got, I got we'll two more crickets here for you yes. before we get to take a break. Uh, LeBron James's Lakers career has been an abject <laughs> failure. <laughs> slam dunk or slam dunk or air ball, I guess. You know, I'm, I'm going to tell you this. Mm-hmm. You know, people, people want to make – LeBron hasn't failed. I'm, I'm not saying he has failed. I'm not saying he hasn't failed. I'm just going to say that his expectations has not been to where he wants okay, to be. Okay, so let me just ask you the question again. So I say air ball. No, no. LeBron's Laker career has been a failure. Is that a slam a dunk? What or a is that an air ball? He joined his team when he was 34 years what old. He, was All he's done is, he was in a Western Conference was Finals last year. Championship. Like, where are you? Where are we? What they is going on? A championship. Like, what are we going on? How is that a failure? It's he a joined the Lakers. It's, it's not a failure, but he hasn't exceed. He hasn't um, ex- exceeded his expectations. Tim. He wants to win two championships. Tim, I love you. Three championships. Big dog. Here's the reality. No, but he Here's the reality. Won. Championship. He has playoffs year after year. Not year after year. He's no. carried, he's carried he his franchise. Okay, he missed one championship. Not year after year. Playoffs. Remember, LeBron playoffs. James had a first round exit. LeBron James missed the playoffs altogether. Right. LeBron James had they to get won, to the but playing they, tournament but last they, year. But, but, uh, even they though they won, went to the they playoff the championship, and the they went to the Western Conference Finals. The Finals. championship they won was a Fugazi championship. No, it wasn't. No, it wasn't. Nobody counts. Craig, here's the deal. It's not an asterisk on there. It's not. Here's the deal. And I think you guys will own this. You guys just happen to be LeBron stands, and no matter what that guy does, you find nothing wrong with it. And I appreciate yes, that. Yes, There's a lot of far. people like no, that. No, yes, no, yes, no, yes, not yes. me. Yes. Not me. Agreed. Not Give me, me an eye not together. Me. You two are wrong. wrong. If, you, if you wrong, you wrong. If you're not playing up to your potential, you're not playing up to Thank your you. potential. Great. I will tell you that. Average of 27. I didn't say he wasn't. I, I didn't say. I, I didn't say. He stood there 50. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. They never put the pieces around him. It's everyone else's fault. To take him. (laughs) (laughs) They got him AD. All right, let me get one more in here. No, he got him AD. Uh, The best bench player in the Western Conference today is Tim Hardaway Jr. Slam dunk or air ball? Slam dunk. Slam dunk. Slam dunk. That's easy. Easy money for you, right? You just need to get some plays run for him. And, you know, you you, you have to – some people have to get off the ball and, and make it easier for other guys on your team. That's how you win games. And some people don't give him the ball when he's oh. wide open. And some, some people, people don't throw it up to him when he's open to make easy plays. And some people, they don't run off. What, what, what people so, can we be talking about? I'm just huh? saying. Kyrie be what, better. What people can you <laughs> no, be talking about? No, I'm not talking about, about Kyrie. Kyrie is better. Ha! Huh. That sounds to me like <laughs> Luka Doncic is a black hole. It is. I'm not saying he's a black hole. Sometimes he just got a little bit too much stick him on his hand. Oh. <laughs> Pass the ball, Luka. You know, you, you, you got to get you got to get a ball to people when they open so they can do something with it. Don't give it to them when it's two seconds left to go on the shot clock and just shoot the ball. Right. You, you can't do nothing with it except shoot and have a bad percentage. That's you right. You know, so give, them, give people the ball where they need to be successful at and do something to help your team instead of you doing all for your team. Some people on your team can help you and so uh, you know it is some people on your team that can help you but you got to have uh, confidence in him. He don't have confidence in a lot of his ball players. There you go. All right. And that was another edition of Slam Dunk or Air Ball. Luca, get the stick him off. Come on, Luca. Yeah. We have ball, some Luke. college action for you in the tournament last night. Yesterday yeah. we had Texas A&M. Look at this. Anderson oh. Garcia. Down by three. Look End of the game. That, that is Hold March it. madness right yes. there. However, they did lose in overtime to Houston. What do you think of the action, Craig? Well, I mean, they lost the game. So, <laughs> it's, 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 like, come on, Craig. Like, First of all, look at that pass. Look at that pass. What, what was the, huge, What type of huge, I huge mean, game is Houston bang. playing? The, 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 it's a great shot. It's at the buzzer. It get, Peyton sends the game to overtime. But you lost the game. They lost. Right. So while uh, that is a great shot, and that kid will have that, you know, to show his grandkids and their kids for the rest of his life, and he'll be you able to talk about it forever. At the end of the day, you lost. Yeah, yeah he yeah. lost. But, like, but it was a great game. 
I'm gonna tell you this. This guy, that's his. Oh, he he only made nine threes the whole season. And Great. That was his ninth one. Well, look, I, and I tell you this. I mean, if Taylor and and, and Rockford. Had a good game instead yeah. of shooting 15 for 48 from the free uh, from yeah. the field and four, four for 15 from the three, they would have won that game because the Houston those, was the, right the, to they, be beat. But they they was right to be, but they lost. So it's a weird thing. Like it was in, a great the, game. in the moment, yeah. great you're game. like that was yes. the, that was the best game of any games from the NCAA yesterday because everybody else got blown. Yeah, out. yesterday was not a great day tournament yes. wise. There were not a very a, a lot of competitive yes. games, and that game was late. All that so a lot of you may not have seen it, but it, I'll tell you what. It was in the moment. Right. We're all going crazy. Right. Because dude made the three to tie it. Yes. And then you're like, son of a bitch. <laughs> Come on. You got to close out the dub after that in overtime. Give Houston credit. Those kids fought back and won in overtime. Uh, and they advance. All the ones yes. have advanced into the sweet 16. Uh, let's keep it straight here. UConn, as I told you a oh, few yeah. months ago, Badass. looks like an absolutely yeah. unbeatable yes. tournament yep. team. Yes. And the mere fact in round one that they were up 35 at halftime <laughs> and a coach was pissed tells you all you need to yeah. know about that yeah. team and what Danny Hurley has done there. Well, Danny Hurley, he, even though you're up 35, he wants you to play the right way. He wants you to go out there with the same intensity, and he wants you to uh, uh, be execution out there on the court. Yep. He don't want nobody to – Going to these laws and it's now we here to we here to win another championship and he understands and he wants to seize the moment. It has been almost 20 years since the team uh, repeated as a tournament champions and that was that Joaquin Noah Florida team Florida, yeah. uh, oh, yeah. way back in the day. I think it was 2007. Al Horford too. Don't forget oh, Al Horford. Yeah. It, was, yeah. it was Noah's team. It was yeah. Noah's team. <laughs> Uh, let's just not let's yeah. not argue about everything today. Is that, is that possible? <laughs> it was all their team. <laughs> it was up. the whole team, team. We got the latest on Otani, and we got uh, some news out of Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh seems to be the hub of a bad news the last couple oh. weeks. Oh. We'll explain we coming up right after this. We all going to have our terrible talk about the Jets. Now. Good morning. Welcome back to the Cardinals. Right. We have your early morning headlines, and we start with that man, Shohei Otani. We have some new information over the weekend. He is officially being investigated by Major League Baseball. He's going to face the media later today. Craig, how do you think this story will develop over the next 24 hours? I think it's going to take a long time for this thing to be meted out because you have the feds doing an investigation into the illegal bookmaking operation in California. And the guy that they're going after has significant ties to Las Vegas going back over a couple of years now. So that's going to take forever. Now you have this kind of sordid details with the interpreter. Did he borrow the money? Did he steal the money? How did he get the money? Uh, and did Otani bet, right? And that's at the end of the day, the most important thing. Was Otani wagering? Uh, did the interpreter act as a kind of a straw man for him and place wages for him? Were there any baseball wages made? And I think that takes time to figure out. Like, baseball is going to go in and interview the same people the feds are interviewing. Some of those people may not talk to baseball because you don't have to. And that's one of the weird things about this is that the interpreter – is no longer an employee of the Los Angeles Dodgers. And because of that, he does not have to talk to baseball investigators. Otani has to. Other members of the Dodgers would have to if asked. But once you get fired, baseball's got no control over you. So he can say, go F yourself. I'm not talking to you guys. And if I was his lawyer, that's what I would tell him to do. Because the more you talk, the more you get yourself in trouble. Yep. Keep your lip tight. What's interesting is what Otani is going to say, and I think it's kind of obvious based on what his lawyers ended last week with, which was he did not loan the guy the money. He was unaware that the guy had this gambling debt, and the money was stolen from his account. I do not know how you prove that a guy wired money from your personal account anywhere, let alone in this case, to an alleged illegal bookmaker, and that's the toughest question for Otani to answer. If they say to Otani, have you ever wagered on sports? That's a yes or no. Right? Period. Stop. Yes? Okay. Then you open up Pandora's box. What did you wager on? When did you wager? How much did you wager? Or you say no. I've never wagered on sports in my life. And theoretically, that should put a wall up towards that questioning. But if he's speaking today, he has been prepped by his law firm and by a PR firm uh, big time to get ready for this. Uh, he's also not speaking English because he's not adept at speaking English just yet. So there's going to be an interpreter now telling us what he had to say. And there's always some words that can get lost in translation in that as well. But if you're expecting a quick resolution to this, you ain't getting it. Because 
Baseball's investigation, I would think, is going to take months. The Fed's investigation is going to take months. It's never going to go away completely until somebody on the record, and that very well could be the guy taking the wagers, tells us unequivocally, I don't know who is making the bets, because how would he know that? But I can tell you that my bookmaking operation never took a single bet on a baseball game. And if that's the case, the interpreter might do jail time if he stole the money, but Otani's clean, and then he moves on. My issue with it is that I know how life works, as you guys do as well. And I'm not naive enough to think that a guy can be using your money to fund his gambling habit and at some point you not have an idea that there's money missing from my account and where did that money go? I find it very hard to believe that almost $5 million was transferred out of a personal bank account to an illegal bookmaking operation and you're going to play babe in the woods. I had no idea. So that's the line of questioning that I'm interested in. How did you not know that that type of money was missing from your account? And then beyond that, how did you trust this guy enough, if that's the story, to allow this guy access to your personal banking information, right? So that's part of it. And then we find out over the weekend that this interpreter has been lying about a lot of things. So one of the things he allegedly lied about was that he graduated from UC Riverside in 2007. UC Riverside says he never attended our school. Mm. Then they go back to his resume, and he claimed he worked as an, as an interpreter for the Boston Red Sox from 07 through 11. Nope. And the Red Sox said, no, we didn't. There's a report that he worked for the Yankees for a short period of time with one of their Japanese language players. And the Yankees said, I don't know what the hell you're talking about. So now you've got a dubious resume in which there appear to be literate lies. You've got the allegation that he's now stealing money from his employer, essentially, quote-unquote best friend, in Otani, and it sits out there like a big matzo ball, and we need to get to the bottom of it because this would be, if Otani is involved and the money was not stolen, the single biggest scandal in sports in 100 years. And this is akin to... The best way I can put it for you, if you don't know who Otani is or you're not a big baseball fan, this would be if there was a scandal involving Michael Jordan in his prime, Muhammad Ali in his prime, Wayne Gretzky in his prime. That's the level of this thing. And it'll be interesting to see what Otani says. And I'll be just as interested to see in what he doesn't say. A lot of times when there's a federal investigation, the people that may be involved are told, you can't answer certain questions because there's an investigation. So if he's going to come out and talk today and he kind of, quote, unquote, pleads the fifth, for lack of a better explanation, that's a problem. Yeah. you got to come out and say, here's what took place. I'm embarrassed I didn't know or whatever the case may be. But this is not going away anytime soon. And for those of you that are big baseball fans, the upside, especially if you're a Dodger fan, is Otani's playing baseball. Otani's not being suspended. Otani's not going to have to yeah. sit out. Otani, opening day, official opening day, in a couple days, Shohei Otani's going to be on the field playing baseball. And from a baseball standpoint, that is a good thing, obviously. So that's where we're at with it. But I can't wait to hear what uh, this press conference is like and uh, how many questions he even answers. I don't think he answers. Because the there's going to be a lot of people asking probing oh, questions. Yeah. And I'll tell you the other thing you want to know. The other thing you do want to know, and the bookmaker's going to have all these records, because this is a high-level operation. Uh, I know who the guy is. Uh, he's very well connected. He used to be to the MGM Grand uh, many years ago. Got the president of the MGM Grand fired because he was betting with this guy. This is a billion-dollar uh, sports betting operation. This isn't you know, nickels and dimes in a street alley. This is legit, you know, huge operation out there in Orange County. So you want to find out. When were the bets made, meaning time of day? Yeah. How many bets were made? You know, one thing that no one's talking about is how does a guy making a couple hundred thousand bucks a year rack up a debt of over $4 million? And I can tell you, just having lived this life, that if you lose four and a half million bucks, there's a good chance you wagered 
about 10x, mm. meaning he might have made 40, 50 million dollars worth of wagers to ultimately get to the number where he lost four and a half million dollars, okay? So there's that aspect of it. What was he betting on? How often was he betting? What was the time of day of the wagers? Where so, like, if you could show me, hey, he never wagered between 7 and 10 Eastern time, well, that's when the Angels are playing baseball, right? That would make sense to me if Otani is involved. So there's a lot of little intricacies here that I'm really looking forward to hearing because at the end of the day, baseball's in a pickle here. And the pickle is if there's a single wager, one, not 50, if there's even one wager on a baseball game, Otani's in trouble from a standpoint of being able to play and earn a living. So we'll see how it plays out. We will. We move on to our second headline that involves my Buffalo Bills and head coach Sean McDermott was asked whether or not they have been successful with Josh Allen at the helm in Buffalo. And here is how he addressed it. He said the following, and I quote, What's left for Josh and for all of us is to take that one more step that we need to take to say we haven't had success or Josh hasn't had success, I think would be kind of narrow-minded. So, Craig, do you think they have been successful in Buffalo yeah. with Josh Allen? Uh, first, I don't, I don't know what he's referring to because I don't know anyone that's ever said they haven't been successful. They've been very successful in Buffalo since Sean McDermott got there and ended a 17-year drought of not making the playoffs. Josh Allen has been very successful as a starting quarterback in the NFL. Their bugaboo, he's not on our set today, is number 15. Yeah. Three out of the last four playoff appearances by the Buffalo Bills have been ended by the Chiefs and Patrick Mahomes, yeah. right? They've been to one AFC championship game, and they blew a nine-point lead and lost by two touchdowns. So the question isn't, have they been successful? Because they've been successful, and there's 20-plus teams that would trade the last five years uh, with the Buffalo Bills right. happily, yeah. right. including our New York sure, Jets. Sure. Four straight AFC championships. You see the titles right there. Five and five in the playoffs. And, of course, the bugaboo is the Michael Jordan of the NFL in Patrick Mahomes. The problem is that there does come a point, I've never experienced this point, but I, I, I've read about it in books, where you get comfortable winning, but then your first round or second round exits gets old. And that's not enough. I know it as a Yankee fan. Right, the Yankees make the playoffs every single year, but haven't been to a World Series since 2009. Right, right. So losing you know, in the wild card round or in the divisional playoffs, that gets old. We need more. And Bills fans, rightfully so, are like, we need more. We got to get to the championship game again. We got to get to the first Super Bowl since Jim Kelly was our quarterback and Mara Levy was the coach. So again, I don't know who says they haven't been successful because that's just stupid and wrong, but they haven't been successful enough because they've never evolved from we're a playoff team to we're a legitimate championship team. And that, to me, isn't so much their doing as it is Patrick Mahomes is just that guy. You can't beat the guy. I think the bottom line is I think a lot of Bills fans see the window closing. Uh, when you talk about the division, Aaron Rodgers and the defense, you talk about – Well, they're Rodgers. not winning the division this year. That's right. Well, but so oh. I think overall, when you talk about Bills fans, you're talking <clears> about six uh, – seven years that <laughs> McDermott has been head coach, they've been to the playoffs six times, and they haven't won the big one. And you talk about Patrick Mahomes, Lamar Jackson's got another MVP. A lot of these quarterbacks are coming to fruition and they're maturing as they go. Josh Allen, Valley, he's a top five quarterback, hasn't been to the big one. So as you mentioned because of Patrick Mahomes, yeah. but from a team standpoint, defensively they have gotten older, right? And they've gotten – Older and the pieces that they want to hold on to, Stephon Diggs was no longer a factor in the offense late in the season. James Cook, this offense line was pretty much spearheaded this team. Josh Allen is pretty much the top dog. Overall, a lot of teams have gotten better and they continue to get better. I think a lot of Bills fans right now are looking back like, hey man, if we don't do it in the next two or three years, this may so, never happen for us. Willie, as a Bills fan, I want to say the following. Um, have they had success with Josh Allen? Yes. yes. Was last season disappointing? Yes. yes. That was the problem. Is That was the chance to beat the Chiefs. You had them at home. You had the lead. You had the ball. Yeah. You have to do that. So it's like, yeah, yes, they've been successful. When you look back at this run, sure, they're winning yep. divisions, they're getting the playoffs, but that was a very disappointing finish to the but season. But on top of that, Jacoby, they had the Buffalo, they had, excuse me, they had the Cincinnati Bengals at home in, in a perfect situation. Man and they got oh, manhandled. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like at home, yeah. 
I was talking about snowing. It was perfect Bills weather. And Cincinnati walked in there with the all whites on. It was like, we got this, right? So it's like. It's been disappointing. It's successful, but also disappointing if those two things can coexist. Yeah. Well, because you're good enough. I think we all agree the Bills have been good enough to get to a Super Bowl. Yeah. But one guy stood in their way, you know, three out of four years. And that's Patrick Mahomes. And the other, of course, was Joe Burrow. Right, mm-hmm. so uh, and, and you lost that game at home, which is obviously problematic because right. you got manhandled in it. But you know, I always talk about when you when you judge quarterbacks, did the quarterback walk off the field for the last time with the lead? And in that one particular case, the answer for Josh Allen is yeah. Yeah, yeah Josh Allen wasn't playing defense with 13 seconds left, oh, in which Mahomes came back and took the game. Really well. And that would have gotten you to your second AFC Championship game in the Josh Allen era. Tell me how many quarterbacks in the AFC not named Patrick Mahomes have been in multiple championship games, right? Mm -hmm. So the point is you've been right there as good as anybody not named Kansas City. And the Bills' problem, of course, this year is that the New York Jets are coming. All right. They're looking for blood. 60 years of pain. (laughs) And this is the year we get everybody back. For all the nonsense that you've spewed in our direction. <laughs> 60 years of pain. And we feel our oats this year, Tim Hardaway. What's next? <laughs> Moving on to our final headline that involves Willie's Pittsburgh Steelers. There we go. There we go. There there some we interesting go. information. There we go. We have Russell Wilson is in, quote, pole position to be the Steelers starter. However, my question for you is, yes, sir. at some point, do you think, there you see the quote, that Justin Fields will take over as the starter in Pittsburgh. Pay attention to that word pole position because yeah. Mike Tomlin believes in competition. Now, I'm not, I know Craig's looking at me. Russell Wilson will be the starting quarterback yeah. for the Pittsburgh yeah. Steelers. Week one. Bottom line. Week, week one. one. But what I know for a fact, <clears throat> Mike Tomlin has a firm belief. Iron sharp as iron. He believes in competition. He will, he will make sure Justin Fields is on par to push Russell Wilson. He would not allow Russell Wilson to rest on his laurels. He would not allow Russell Wilson to just think he's going to come in there and just do what he wants. He will have to produce day after day and be able to show that he can lead these men to victory every Sunday. So it's on Russell Wilson to lose the job, not gain. I mean, this is stupid. <laughs> what? Like, you know, Justin Fields is never going to be the starting quarterback of the Steelers unless Russell Wilson gets hurt. He has no chance to be the starting quarterback. This is a public play just to let Russell Wilson know just because you're Russell Wilson and the guy we acquired has been a disappointing quarterback in his three years in the league uh, doesn't mean that everything's going to be handed to sure, a silver exactly. platter. Exactly. We brought in a young kid who's hungry, yep. who's going to push you, push you, push you, push you. And if at any point you decide to act like the prima donna, you were year one in Denver, I'm coming for you. That's all this is. This is a public play against Russell Wilson's uh, perceived personality of being a me first guy. Because as soon as you're me first, Mike Tomlin is going to remind you, I got a kid who's a little bit better than you athletically, has a stronger arm than you, and is faster than you. He's just not as good a quarterback as you, but we're going to push, 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 push. And I get it. By the way, I don't even mind it. But if anyone out there actually is trying to read into this, and I'm not saying you are. Oh, no, I am. But <laughs> I am. if you're, tr- again, you guys are trying to read into the fact that Russell Wilson may not be the starting quarterback, is, I mean, come on. What you Mike just Tom said. is going into the last year of his contract. They acquired good talent around yes, they did. Uh, Russell Wilson, right? They uh, got a good defense even better with their free agent acquisitions. They've got weapons now to throw the ball to. They got rid of the malcontent in that locker room in Johnson. And they're going to be a really, 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 really good football team. And they will enter the season thinking, we can beat everybody in our division. All due respect to Lamar Jackson and the Ravens having won the division and the number one seed. And we have Super Bowl uh, goals this year. Now, we could say they're not going to win the Super Bowl. That's easy to say only one team is. But if I'm a Steeler fan, I am absolutely a Super Bowl contender going into September. Oh, yeah. so, 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 so what do you what you just said, yeah. what you said earlier with Jordan Love. Yeah. Uh, what I mean, you saying that the Pittsburgh Steelers got Super Bowl aspirations. Absolutely right. 
And Jordan Love don't think that he's his team doesn't suppose to have. Jordan Love's so, allowed to think that he does. I mean, I mean, he's I mean, just I mean wrong. But, <laughs> but he's allowed to think but, that. But, I, yeah. mean, I mean, and, and Pittsburgh. Jordan Love, as this stage of his career, I understand all couldn't that. Couldn't hold but, Russell but, Wilson's yeah, jockstrap. I understand that, but I'm just saying Jordan Love saying we're coming. That's right. And 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 you upset that you don't think that they're coming. Well, no, I want to be clear about what I said. Right. Since apparently it's a little confusing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. <laughs> That's what, what I heard. Okay, what I said was I appreciate Jordan. Jordan Love saying it. Right. He should say it. I right. want my quarterback right. to say exactly. it. Right, exactly. Now, over here on this side, right. he's bat, bat bleep. <laughs> right. All right? Uh, he gets crazy, crazy. Right. Now, he should be crazy, but he's crazy. Right. Right? Right. The Green Bay Packers are not going to, nor are they winning the Super Bowl. But I want my quarterback to think right. they are. But you, but you saying that the Pittsburgh Steelers are. I think the Pittsburgh Steelers are a legitimate Super Bowl contender this Correct. year. Okay. I don't think the Packers are. Okay. And I say that acknowledging that the Packers do play in the NFC where the road to a Super Bowl goes through one team and one team only, and that's San Francisco. Right. Like if you're Green Bay, Detroit, maybe Chicago, if Caleb was that good, like we saw last year in Houston with C.J. Stroud. The Eagles, maybe, whatever. Yeah. There's one team that's king of the mountain. The and everybody's chasing San Francisco. Steelers are in a really tough division. Yeah. You yeah. don't see a world in which, hypothetically, yeah. they start slow. Justin Fields is backup quarterback. Yeah. They don't look at Justin Fields to be the starting no. quarterback? No. You really want Justin no, Fields to. I, <laughs> I really do. No. I really do. Justin Fields will I never really play do. it down for the Pittsburgh Steelers. He's going to be. No, he should. He's not a good quarterback. He, he, he's not a good no, quarterback. They should have made him a slot receiver in Chicago. No, 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 no. Stop. Wildcat. Wildcat. Wild wild and let me tell you why. Wild what the slot what, what did they get for him? A sixth round pick, seventh round pick, whatever it was. Yeah, right? So you're telling me that Justin Fields wouldn't have meant more to the Chicago Bears as a slot receiver than whoever they pick in the sixth round? Come on, no, now. I, I think Ryan Come on Paul now. wanted Keep more it than straight. They, it was, he, the other teams were willing to give up for. You're not getting a good player in the sixth or seventh round. The bottom line, they, we, I, I, you, slot you receiver. want to go down the rabbit hole? Tom Why? Brady. Tom Brady. Tom Brady. Yeah. <laughs> It's happened before. You guys are yeah. crazy. I mean, I mean, it's Tom Brady. It could happen. Yeah, it, it could happen. It could happen. It could happen. Don't say it, it ain't going to happen, oh, but Lord. it could happen. Ah. Yes, the next greatest quarterback to ever play in the NFL probably will not come from the sixth round. Well, it does, well, it, it doesn't have to be a quarterback, you, though. You never know. It doesn't have to be a quarterback. Coming up after a very quick break, <laughs> uh, I'm going to you know, uh, walk away from these guys, remove myself from these crazy conversations. But here's the good news, But you Jet bring fans. them up. You're right. <laughs> Robert Sala, the Jets head coach, has Another spoken. He's going to bring up. And you're you're going to want to hear what he has to say because it's Super Bowl and bust right after this. Ooh, another NFL conversation one. we got to go through. Good morning. Welcome back to the Carton Show. We have some brand new sound from that man right there, the head coach of the Jets. He was asked if it would be a failure if the Jets did not make the playoffs and this is fresh sound for Robert Sala. Here's how to answer the question. Um, I'll never say that. You know, it's uh, you know, like I said, we're put your head down, do the best you can, put your work in and uh, obviously we all want to win games. We all want to go to the playoffs. We all want to win championships. That's That's been the goal since the day we walked in here and uh, felt like we were going to have that opportunity last year. It didn't happen and um, this year is about picking ourselves up, putting our heads down and just working. Craig, there's your guy. How much pressure are the Jets and Robert Sala under this A season? lot. He's, uh, he starts the season more on thin ice than any coach in football because three years into the solid tenure, we've never made it to the playoffs, never had a winning season uh, either. So the notion that we can go through another year in which we don't make the playoffs, <clears throat> wrong. The New York Jets have to make the playoffs. Yep. That period, stop. 100%. I'm not saying you have to win a Super Bowl because you can't put those expectations on a team that, you know, has gone uh, 12 straight years without even making the postseason, the longest in all of North American sports. But you have to make the playoffs. And then, to be fair, depending on what you do in the playoff game would also dictate whether or not everybody gets to come back. So the, I, this team has to understand, and my gut is that they do. They know what it's like being in New York and, and dealing with the fan base and the media and all the things that come with it. It is unacceptable. And I want to be clear about it. If they went 14-3 and three and missed the playoffs, everybody gets fired. So it's not about even what the record is. It's about did you make the postseason. Now, for me... Uh, my my requirements are a little bit more stringent oh. than others. Oh. I need to win the division. 
I don't want to, you know, mess around with, you know, is my record good enough? Do I have to win a week 18? No. We go out there, we win the division. It's our division to lose. The Bills have taken a step back. The Dolphins have taken a step back. And who knows who the Patriots quarterback's going to be and a first-year head coach. Anything other than making the postseason is unacceptable. And Joe Douglas and Robert Sala most likely pay for that with their jobs. And I don't sit here willy-nilly asking for guys to be fired. I've never done that unless it's really deserved, right? right? And if they don't make the playoffs this year, Sadly, it would be deserved because it's year four. You got the benefit of the injury to Aaron Rodgers last year as the only reason you both got to come back with essentially the entire coaching staff intact, most notably Nathaniel Hackett as offensive coordinator. But what I don't like about that oh. is I think from day one, and today for me is day one because it's the first time Raul Sala has spoken to the media really this offseason, sure. right? You, I want my head coach to set the tone from Jump Street and come out and say, you bet your ass it's unacceptable if we don't make the playoffs. We've upgraded the offensive line. We've gotten depth at wide receiver. We didn't take too big a hit on defense. And Aaron Rodgers comes back healthy. So I'm letting the guys know from meeting one, from interview one, from day one, anything short of playing postseason football is unacceptable, and that's why I don't like that particular answer. Yeah, 100% right, Craig. I, I think at the end of the day, you also, if you paid attention to this team this year, uh, this year, following year, listen, the little mistakes they made were so big because they couldn't score, right? There was so there's so much little margin for error for this team that there was so much pressure. Like, I, watching Garrett Wilson and Quentin Williams and these guys talk at the end of the game, you can see the life seek out of these young dudes, and these are studs. These are perennial guys. At the end of the day, Je- uh, Craig is 100% right. Being last in offense, being last in third down, is not is, that's, that's, those days are over. When you have Aaron Rodgers on the center with the pieces they now have, they have to be a top 10 uh, offense, and they have to deliver on so, defense. So, for me, it's a matter of consistency as a matter and I'm glad and I think you hit it right on head Craig if you're Robert Sala you have to talk with a sense of desperation and evil in your eyes what happened last year was a flat out embarrassment because you have a defense you have an offense that fails you for ain't talking about and listen on top of that go back to 2023 this team was seven and ten right and they had an offensive coordinator that they fired and it brought in Nathaniel Hackett and we got Aaron Rodgers and we were off to the moon and then it all went crashing down if you're the New York Jets fan you, you you're throwing your, your season tickets away because at the end of the day, if they don't produce wins and they don't look like Alfred that can at least compete in their division, you're going to stop going to games because it's disgusting. Two they years ago, produce. it was a quarterback position. They upgraded that. Last year, it was the offensive line. They upgraded that. And they got a second receiver now. It Right now, my question about the New York Jets is Robert Sala and Nathaniel Hackett. Those are my questions because they've addressed every other need. They've got, as Craig said, the best team they've had on paper. In, in I want to be clear about that, and I'll double down on that. This is talent-wise the best team the New York Jets franchise has ever had. I say that with an O to 2008, which yeah. was a very good team, obviously. Yeah. But for my money, my lifetime, uh, and I'm 26, this is the greatest uh, New York Jets <laughs> collection of talent that they've ever had, including Joe Namath. Uh, and, yeah, I mean, we lose our quarterback. Not a lot of teams win a lot of games with a backup quarterback or third or fourth or fifth string quarterback, but too bad. Like, it's the NFL. And I will speak to Robert Saul later this week, and I'll remind him that the public messaging has to be, it is playoffs or bust. Yeah. Period. Oh, Stop. Yeah. And I don't care I don't how you do it. Good enough. You have to get into the playoffs this year. And then we could debate where's the game, can you win, all that kind of nonsense. But anything short. Of making the postseason, bye bye. Yep. You got to go, and I hate the fact that we're already setting the tone for. I would never say that it's playoffs or bust. Screw that. It's playoffs or bust, right. Right. and that's it. And he, I know he wants it. I know the organization wants it. Don't be afraid of owning it. And I know it's the New York media, which I was a part of for a very long time. And I know we're going to hold you accountable for what you say. And if you say playoffs are bust and you don't make the playoffs, then what do you do? Drag, it don't matter because you know you're going to get fired if you don't make the playoffs. Aaron Rodgers could get hurt tomorrow. If you don't make the playoffs, you're getting fired. Period. Stop. But let me yes. ask you this. So I think you got to own it. You got to come out. And today was a missed opportunity. You got to come out and say, look, Joe Douglas has given me everything I want. A better offensive line, depth and wide receiver, a top five defense, and yeah, Aaron Rodgers comes back. 
and I'm putting my career on the line. If I don't lead the New York Jets to the postseason, I'll hand in my resignation. That's what I would say. Let he didn't say it. Let me ask Gotta you this. Say it. So didn't say it. Half season, if he's not living up to everybody's expectations or the team's expectations, do you think he'll be gone? I, I think it depends how they get to whatever you're getting at. If it's incompetence, if it's bad coaching, if it's bad misuse coaching. of timeouts, I think it's possible that a midseason decision could be made. Because as Willie and I know, for the first time in a long time, Woody Johnson is it's not just all in. No, no. He's got a teenage son who he now enjoys watching games no. with, who uh, has kind of reinvigorated, in my opinion, his interest in a football day-to-day. Yes. And he is not going to tolerate like a two and six start. Right. Period. Get out. Get out. Get out. Now. <laughs> I can't have it. Get, 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 get. Two and six. Right. No, I think I'm, you, I'm just saying three, that. Three and five. Get, get out. out. That, six. Yeah, that's awful. By the yeah. way, yeah. four and four. Get out. Yeah. 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 yeah, I think you're right. You've talked about this earlier. This division is to be had, right? You talked about the woes that the Buffalo Bills are going through. The Patriots, who are they? We don't know, right? And the Dolphins losing some of their key mentions, uh, members, including Christian Wilkins, uh, going to the Raiders. At the end of the day, if you know Jets right now, you have to believe with Aaron Rodgers, it's all or nothing this year. And if you're Robert Sala, Enough with the headlines. We need you to get Rex Ryan on their ass. Because you know one thing about Rex, yeah. he'll be in the media talking yeah. about what he was going to do and how he was going to charge the hill. That motivates the locker room. If you're not willing to do that right now, you're falling on deaf one ears. One good thing that did come out of his uh, little get-together with the press, uh, I guess, earlier this morning, was that he did say that Aaron Rodgers is all in and they are expecting him to be a part of minicamp and training camp. Yeah. And all the, the voluntary stuff that he does not have to show up for, uh, and he's coming. He's coming. Well, well, he's coming to get well, some, Timmy. Well, 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 you Screaming know what, you from know the what, mountains. You know what happened Screaming last, from the valleys. You know what happened he's last coming year. to get some. You, you saw what happened last summer, him just running with that little thing on. and. <laughs> you know so, what? You're so a bad I'm, guy. I'm just, I'm just, You're I'm just a saying, bad I'm just guy. Saying, I'm just saying you need yeah. to take it easy. You're a bad don't guy. Don't rush him back. You I know, don't and, like and, you. And as an older player, you know you want to come back and be one of 100% and yeah. like you used to be. Uh-huh. He, he has to be well, careful. Well, I guarantee you we will not see video of Aaron Rodgers this year pulling a 10-pound sled on the field. I, yeah. I, I guarantee you that. I hope not. Yeah, I, I wouldn't even let him do jumping jacks right now. <laughs> Time now for a Monday segment we like to call Get Learned. Get Learned. Get Learned. Uh, these Get are all learned. the things we learned over uh, the weekend uh, in the sports world. Number one, uh, this was a crazy one. I double-checked it. It's true. You, uh, you know, they had the owners' meetings uh, over the last couple of days, and a picture came out of a Jerry Jones taking notes at the meeting. And what I learned was, Jerry Jones takes notes like Willie did in Whoa. high school. Look at this right here. <laughs> this All right, focus in. This focus is actually in. real. Focus in on the notepad, please, boys, so people can see exactly what we're talking. There you go. That is the, that is the, that's the brilliance. The brilliance yeah. of the leadership of the most yeah. important franchise of football. Yeah, that's scribble scrabble. <laughs> yeah. That's when, uh, apparently, that... <laughs> <laughs> also, his off-season acquisitions. Yeah. That's when Woody Johnson started speaking. He was taking notes. Yeah. Uh, no, 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 no. That's scribble scrabble from a billionaire. Yeah. Is what that is. I love that. All right. The second thing I learned this weekend, you if learn? you'd like to know what it is, you yes, learn, yes. is that tournament time. UConn is not going to get beat by anybody, and they are going to win their second consecutive NCAA championship. This is the most complete basketball team in the country. Danny Hurley is doing a great job. Eight straight tournament wins, and they won it last year, and I think they're winning it again this year. I think they're going to win it again this year myself. Uh, You know, he got the team focused. He got them ready. Uh, they, They out there paying attention to detail. Uh, you know, he's up 30, 35. He's still getting on them, yeah. making sure that they don't do have bad habits. We we want to we want to stay sharp each and every game. So and yeah. the other good thing about Danny Hurley, you may notice here, Duke got to the Sweet 16 this weekend as well. Yeah. And I watched Duke play. I'm like, I don't hate them as much because there's no Mike Krzyzewski oh, right. on the sideline. I need to hate people. You like Duke? I, I, no, I hate Duke. Oh. I hate Duke I with like a passion, they're, they're but I hate them a little less because there's no Krzyzewski. I still find them Danny angry. Hurley, really? who I like a lot and love his dad, obviously. Uh, Danny Hurley is the kind of coach you could grow to hate very quickly. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so I like that. Yeah. I need that in my but, but, but life. He, but, he, but he got exuberance. He out yeah. there confident. Yeah. He, uh, He'll, he'll also help. square off and say, let's go. I kind of like, like with that. anybody. Yes, yes. Especially with the referees. He's <laughs> ready to square off with them all the time. They have to hold him back. Every game, 
the uh, assistant coaches or your, his team has to hold him yes. back from going into the race. It's awesome. Space. It's awesome. The third thing I learned this weekend is that despite kickboxing featuring, well, kicking, uh, <laughs> kickboxing brought us the greatest oh. nose punch of the year. Oh, oh man. Oh. Man, oh, man. Reconstruction oh, man. surgery right yes. there. Yes. And now, like most Long Island oh, girls, he's going to get a nose job. And yeah. that is one more time. Oh. Yahtzee. Oh. Do you the, think, let me ask you this. <laughs> do you think he will ever fight again? Yes. Yeah. yeah. No. Yeah. 100%. And then get his Did nose Did fighters get their nose again broke? Again like yeah, yeah, yeah. I've yeah. never met a fighter who didn't break his nose at least once. Oh. Yeah. So wow. there you go. Well, Speaking sure. of <laughs> noses and fighters, <laughs> yeah, uh, can someone tell Conor McGregor to stop putting things in his? Oh. All right. oh, okay. oh. I don't know what it is. What, what do you think, Craig? All right. The next thing I learned is that it turns out the Otani interpreter lied not just about potentially gambling, but now we found out he lied about a lot of things. He lied about graduating from UC Riverside back in 2007 because they said, yeah, he never went here. Never met him. Uh, and then he claimed he worked for the Red Sox for a number of years as an interpreter, and they said, yeah, no, no, he didn't. And then he claimed he worked for the Yankees for a brief amount of time when they had a Japanese-born player. And the Yankees came out and said, no, no, we checked our records. Never paid him either. Yeah. So now we've got a guy who apparently has lied about his education, has lied about his work experience on his resume, and now he's asking us to believe that he was given the money as a gift from a friend, and he also wants us to believe that Otani had no idea that he was giving him the money. That so on his resume, getting, on his resume, he said that he worked for the Red Sox and the Yankees. That is yeah. correct. That is and correct. the Angels didn't check that. Uh, appar- apparently, no one checked it. Yeah, right. Because who reads resumes these days? He should right? just flat out be like, he should flat out say, "I stayed at a Holiday Inn last night." <laughs> <laughs> By the way, Otani is speaking today at some point uh, later today with an interpreter uh, to answer questions about this. Uh, a pending scandal. So uh, tomorrow on the show, of course, we'll uh, figure out what he said and uh, what we think about what he said. Other thing I learned this weekend, you know, for all the bad helicopter parents there are in youth sports, Caitlin Clark's dad oh, love, is a great oh, example. Yeah. Yeah. Shut up! Hey, this. this guy is a great example of not love being this. a helicopter uh, parent. So Caitlin Clark takes a forearm right to the mouth in uh, the tournament game against Holy Cross, and then she's complaining to her dad that dad thinks they don't stop fouling me. Yeah. And her dad goes, would you quit your complaining right. and go stop play basketball? As a guy who's coached his kids, his kids who play ball, and of course you have as well, and your son plays yeah. at the highest level, and your kids are too young right yep, now, yep, yep. that guy should be the poster child for what parents should do, as opposed to the way we see a lot of parents in youth sports. I love that. I love it too. I used to do that to my son, but I'm mean, like, why are you looking up to your dad or your parents while you're playing the game? The coach is over there. You're supposed to be talking to your coach. You're not supposed to be talking to your parents. And that's what I, I, I don't like about that. Sure. Because you, you, you really, like, like uh, as, as a player, your, 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 your parent could be telling you what to do, and you're not really listening to the coach right. and, to, and doing what the coach tell you to do. But I do like, what he, I, I do like him saying, stop your complaining, Go play shut up, and play basketball. And, and don't worry about nothing. Yep. You can't control the referees. The only thing you can do is control what your team does in scoring a basketball and winning games. That's right. That, that being you. said, she took a vicious forearm yeah. elbow to the jaw yeah. uh, and came back. Was and that played. a flagrant too? Hundred percent. Yeah. They, they kicked Here's him out. Here's the play right here. Okay. Watch this play right here. Uh, and the, I mean, oh. that oh, basketball that was play. It was that, 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 look at that. No, Boom. no, that's that's a fight. That was intense. <laughs> they should have threw her out. Yeah, I think they did, actually. They should have threw her but out. But that was absolutely intentional. Yeah, that that was, ain't a that basketball very, move no, or nothing not else. Uh, that she, was one of those. She, 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 won't, yeah, she, yeah, yeah, yeah. she Boom. wound up and hit her. Yeah. I just yeah. love Tim saying, that's a fight. Yeah, <laughs> that's a fight. Yeah, that's that, a fight. that is a fight. All right, so that's what I learned this weekend. One other quick thing I learned. I got to squeeze it in because it makes me happy. Uh, we found out over the weekend there will be a uh, happy Gilmore too. Oh, there you go. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Shooter. Very yeah. excited about that. Very, very oh, excited. This, that was good. Oh, Chubbs aren't it? Chubbs is dead. Yeah, yeah Chubbs, Chubbs is dead. Uh, we lost well, Chubbs. I mean, he died in the first one, so I don't know how they bring him back yeah. anyway. Talks, but the yeah. actor is now dead oh, as well, okay. so. Way to bring that up, buddy. Appreciate yeah, that. All right, coming up. Was, uh, 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 more on that Get Jerry alert. Jones uh, notepad <laughs> as we try to figure out what the Cowboys' plans are going into the draft. And the Kansas City Chiefs made an interesting decision in their attempt to three-peat. But why did they cut a certain player or trade him? We'll find out after this.
fan. I am a fan of Jerry Jones, though. And Jerry Jones, much like the rest of us, when he's bored in a meeting and he's got a pen and a piece of paper, you just start doodling a little bit. Yeah. So this is Jerry Jones. This is not Photoshopped or anything. This is Jerry Jones at the owners' meetings over the last couple days. I will show you a close-up of the notes. Yeah. Uh, I'm not yeah. sure where. And you see it's an NFL pad. See, the, like, you know, the, the crest there right in the middle. I'm trying to figure out, though, where he's re-signing Doc Prescott. Uh, <laughs> yeah, we actually have a close-up to make it a little bit easier for you guys to see what's actually on the list there. I'm not the father. Uh, <laughs> I am not the father. I don't know what That's all it means. I'm old and, I'm old and rich. I don't know what all it means. I love Jason Garrett. Yeah. Uh, okay. <laughs> yeah. Oh, and I got the little Syracuse S there. Yeah, yeah. I like that. Okay. All right. I don't know what the connection to the Cutes is, but I noticed the Syracuse S there. So that's Jerry Jones at the <laughs> It meetings. could be money sign. Okay. Thanks, I'm not Jimmy. the father. Yeah. <laughs> uh, here's Jacoby now with first of football. Go ahead. We have some news from the Super Bowl champion Chiefs. Yes. Mm-hmm. They have traded. Their cornerback, Legereus Sneed, for a third-round pick, and they swapped some seventh-round picks. Sneed was a big part of their success last season, Craig. Are you surprised that they made this move? Yeah, very surprised because this is a team that's running it back to do what's never been done before, and that's the three-peat. And today, they're not as good a football team as they were 48 hours ago before they made the trade. Sure. Uh, they, they also don't get that pick until 2025. Mm. So this is a team that... We weren't sure if they could fit everyone back in another year financially. And to their credit, they did. They got Jones done. They franchised, you know, Snead in the moment. We thought, all right, he's going to be pissed, but good move. You keep uh, your 29-year-old cornerback for one more year, and let's not get it twisted. I don't think they win the Super Bowl last year if Snead's not on the field. All due respect to the greatness, bless you, of, uh, of Chris Jones and what he meant to them, especially on that third down in the Super Bowl against San Francisco. It seems to me that they are devaluing the cornerback position. Uh, that seems quite obvious now. Uh, and at 29 years old, and a guy that's played a decent amount of football, don't forget, he was a rookie at 23. He got a later start to his NFL career that they feel like we've got a good and enough young talent in our secondary yep. that we can walk away from him. What bothers me about it is that you trade him to an AFC team. And the Titans are a good team now on paper. I don't know how good they're going to be, but give the Titans credit. That is a completely different roster right. now right. than the one that ended the season out of the playoffs last year. And, of course, like any team with a young quarterback, if Levis is any good, the Titans are going to be a team be that pushes for a division title this yep. year and you know maybe even a wild card spot in the playoffs. So I'm not quite sure why you traded him to an AFC team. I'm not sure why you traded him a month away from the NFL draft when there's no pressure to have to do that. Uh, and I'm not sure why you think you're going to be as good defensively without him. Remember, when we talked about Kansas City last year, and I think Chiefs fans would agree with me on this, the strength of the Chiefs, outside of Mahomes, obviously, the strength of the Chiefs was their secondary. Yes, yes. They were a hard team to throw the ball against with any level of consistency, right? So you've now made your secondary not as good going into next year. I don't know who they're going to draft, obviously, but Snead's a game winner. Snead made the biggest play in the biggest spots for them. And why you'd say goodbye to that guy for an unnamed player pick who's not even going to join your team this season. That guy doesn't get picked until 2025. And if the Titans are any good, that pick goes down and down and down and down in that third round. This makes no sense at all to me as a casual observer of the NFL. Yeah, I, I think they'll be solid. I think, obviously, Snead is an impact player. He was their biggest shutdown corner. Overall, we talked about, I talked about their depth earlier. They have young quality depth at the position where they can lean on now moving forward. When they signed Chris Jones, they didn't have anybody behind them to say, all right, this is the next Chris Jones for the Kansas City Chiefs. They didn't, so that's why there was an immediate need to get him done. Overall, if you're the Chiefs and you look at some of the pieces you got coming down the road that you need to reside, like a 
Creed Humphreys, a Trey Smith. Also, you got Donovan Smith, that big left tackle. <laughs> Uh, you also have Nick Bolton in linebacker position. They need that money to kind of allocate and get these guys paid going forward. But if you're the Chiefs right now, you're not really worried because you still got Spags. You re-signed him. You also got a young defense that can get after the uh, passer. They got four or fifth round guys. Well, that can still and it also home. shows you, you know, the way the Kansas City Chiefs do business because they did it with Tyree Kill. They didn't want to give him the big contract, right? right? Uh, so they traded him. Uh, and he goes to Miami and gets the money he wants. They also believe that Trent McDuffie is now the heir apparent. And they yeah. believe that Trent McDuffie now evolving as to one of the yeah. better cornerbacks, you know, top yeah. ten cornerbacks in the league, is more than enough to make up for not having Snead there. But I come from a world where you don't walk away from talent. You don't, because every team is trying to acquire talent. And I know 29 years old, and he's going to turn 30 during the season. Yep. I don't care. I would have let him play on the franchise tag, and I would have come back with my defense intact, plus whatever I had in the draft, because I'm trying to do something that's never been done before. And now you tell McDuffie, you better be all world. You better well, you be all got world. Justin Reed, you got Jadarius Ward. They got some guys that can still make plays and be an impact guys as well. Remember, this team doesn't win a Super Bowl last year if LeJarrius Sneed is no. not on the no. field. And I'm not sure which is more head-scratching. The fact that the Kansas City Chiefs uh, trade uh, Sneed for a player that will not be picked until 2025, or if I may be fair and, and quite transparent with you yeah, three yeah, gentlemen, yeah, yeah. that or the fact that my head coach won't say that if you miss the playoffs, it's unacceptable. <laughs> I'm not sure which is more head-scratching, but we're going to get into it because that's what my head coach said about an hour ago, that he will not put a playoffs or bust requirement on this year's version of the New York Jets. And you wonder why Jet fans <laughs> have such a tough time in life. I need a break. <laughs> Moving on to our second headline. And Come that on, The Green Bay Packers and their quarterback, Jordan Love, has set yeah. the expectations high. For this Let's go, Jordan. Season. Yes. Here is what Love said about the Packers. It's a great feeling, man. We're, we're all very hungry for, for this upcoming year, but like you said, man, the confidence from, you know, top to bottom is there. You know, the organization believes that, um, you know, it's the perfect time to, to have a chance to win a Super Bowl this year. Next year, we're going to do it. Ain't, there's no more we're a young team. There's no more of those um, what ifs. Like, people know we're about now, and um, obviously, you know, we'll have that target on our back. People are going to want to beat us, so. He said that they are Super Bowl contenders. Are the Packers Super Bowl contenders, Greg? No. Stop they, it. They may not, uh, look, they may not even win their division, and they didn't win it last year. They get it as a wild card, right? So you've got the Chicago Bears rebuilt with Caleb Williams now coming out as the number one pick. And if he has the type of year C.J. Stroud at, the Bears are playoff bound. You've got the Detroit Lions, who everyone's sleeping on because they're the Detroit Lions. They went to the NFC Championship game yeah. last year. I ain't going to sleep on Detroit trying to run it back to get there and maybe be on and get to a Super Bowl. I think Green Bay is a good story. I think Green Bay made some very good moves this offseason, getting Xavier McKinney, of course, from the Giants to be their starting yep. uh, you know, safety, yep. you know, getting younger at running Jacobs. backs, uh, Jacobs, and getting yep. Jacobs, of course, who led the league in rushing just two years ago. So I like the moves they made. I'm not going to count them out. Obviously, you have a new left tackle playing there with Bakhtiari, yeah. uh, you know, maybe retiring but not playing for them uh, this year. But I'm not yet ready to anoint Jordan Love and the Packers as Super Bowl champions because the last time I saw Jordan Love on a football field, oh God. I remember this. Jordan Love rolling to his right, looking, looking, throwing across his body in the middle of the field, and it's intercepted. And the San Francisco 49ers have survived another threat, and onward and upward they go. That's what I remember from the last pass Jordan Love through this past year. And for those of you that are saying, oh, but Craig, what about the last nine games? What about the first eight games? I believe my... What? What? What do you get My team has a full screen thing to show you oh. so I can... Oh, uh, oh, really? oh okay. But like oh, everybody okay. else I asked full for here, okay. it's oh. not ready. Like, we're going to oh. do it tomorrow, but, but you we're know, not. I think, I think my graphic is ready. Oh. <laughs> That's, get him ready. And I, I, th I think we have it. Can we show what week nine looked like for Jordan Love? That's what matters. Oh, oh there it goes. Oh, right. He threw about 26 yeah. touchdowns and five interceptions. Mind you, in 10 games, he only threw three picks. What I love about Jordan Love, this is the post for Aaron Rodgers ever. They have a franchise quarterback, and they know who he is. The man threw for 4,000 yards. 
32 touchdowns, 11 interceptions. This is the quarterback for the Green Bay Packers, and they got a gang with him. So if I'm the Green Bay Packers and you have this young stud, it's, it, it's of course you have confidence you can get to the Super Bowl because you beat the D Dallas Cowboys at home. You took the San Francisco uh, 49ers down to the wire and almost beat them. At the end of the day, way they left the field, Valley, they lost. The future is bright. And it's all going to New Orleans. You might remember one of the great literary characters of all time. His name was Sidney Carton, as a matter of fact. Oh. And he gave a little speech. Towards the best of times, towards the worst of times. It's a tale of two cities, of course. And while you may want to show me from week nine on, it's interesting eight? how you would completely forget and turn a blind eye to eight weeks of football. Oh, here we are. There's my graphic way late. But there it is. <laughs> Uh, is that good football, Willie? No. You played the sport. Well, why was this? Didn't they make the play? No, no, no. Hold on. Whoa, 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 whoa. We, true athletes know one thing. Ahem. It doesn't matter how you start. Right. It's how you finish. Exactly. Stop right how did they finish? Stop, Stop right there. How did they finish? Stop right there. They finished those games Stop right there. How did they finish? Jordan Love rolling to oh. his right. <laughs> yeah. Jordan Love played in the but, final but, season. But, but they was there. Thank and you. they had a chance to win. I know we got to take a break. But they was there. My friend just said to me, it only matters how you finish. Right. And how they, they finished there. was a bad interception. They, well, okay. I'll explain he more during the break that. to you guys. <laughs> no. <laughs> All right. Usually your nose is in the middle of your face, Craig, but uh, his is. Oh, oh, wow. buddy. Yeah, that's, that's kickboxing right there, but with, with punches. And uh, his nose is on the wrong side of his face. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh yeah. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Hey, it's tough earning a living. Like but Squidward. <laughs> yes, it does. <laughs> that, was, uh, that was the punch of the weekend because in UFC, the best thing was a bite. It wasn't even a punch. Oh, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. For the top five at no. nine. All right, here we go. Number five. 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 Jerry Jones's notes at the NFL owners' meetings <laughs> proves beyond a shadow of a doubt, and 100%, he is not all in. Give me my close-up of the notes. Here's Jerry Jones, <laughs> Look, unedited notepad at the NFL owners' meetings. Oh, Jerry. What are you right. doing? There's yeah. a lot of scribble, scrabble. That's, of course, when the, the Eagles start talking. He just starts scribbling because right. he gets bored by everything I have to say. But that proves beyond a shadow of a doubt. He ain't all in. Yeah, definitely he woke up from a nap and somebody startled him. <laughs> that's, that's, that's definitely what it looks. All right, number four. Other than two games yesterday, let's be honest, the tournament stunk yesterday. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Every yeah, game yeah. was a blowout. Yeah. We did, of course, have a more average margin of victory of essentially 19 points. And the one game that went down to the wire, Houston, the one seed cool. on the ropes. AM drops the top of the key, three to tie it. And it's overtime we go. And then and they, they got waxed in overtime, yeah, right. meaning yeah. that that shot really they meant nothing. They get waxed. They just lost by Well, that, that shot meant nothing. I mean, that shot yeah. did mean something. <laughs> they had five minutes to get their stuff like together to try to win. My brain is still alive. If it, you're going to make the shot to tie it, you got to go win You got to win the game. You got to win Not the game. Not necessarily. You got to win the game. I mean, you just make it to tie it. You don't, I mean, you that, just give yourself yeah. a chance. You gotta, you gotta tie give it. yourself a chance. If you're gonna tie it, you gotta win it. You might as well uh, not make it. Because what's the point of making it <laughs> if you're not gonna win it? Oh, so you waste my time. The same thing with San Francisco and Kansas City Chiefs in the playoffs. I mean, championship game, right? Waste of my time. Waste of my no, time. It wasn't. It wasn't. No, it wasn't. Tim Hardaway. <laughs> Tim Hardaway, four years at UTEP, never missed the tournament. Never. Not a single time. Never. Also, yeah. never got to the Elite Eight, but that's another no. story for the day. No, but I'm three. Today is Charlie Otani's most important moment as a Major League Baseball player because today he has his first opportunity to speak to the assembled media about this gambling scandal. We learned over the weekend that Major League Baseball got permission from the feds to do their own parallel investigation. So they have a, a department called the DOI, Department of Investigations. Did <laughs> you just make that up? No, no, it's true. But it's <laughs> part of a department of yeah, investigations. Yeah, the baseball has a DOI. Department of Investigations. And you know what they do? Investigations. They investigate. Yeah, investigate. Yeah, right, right, right. So their investigation is happening at the same time that the feds are. The feds are not even looking out of Tony right now. They're focusing on the illegal bookmaker uh, out there in Orange County, California, and of course the interpreter. And there's only one thing that really matters, and that is, is there a single wager or more on Major League Baseball? That is the game changer. If every wager that was made, whether the money came from Otani's account, 
uh, uh, or not, whether he was involved or not, as long as there is not a single dime wagered on baseball, he survives it. If, however, there's a single bet, just Ooh. one, on baseball, he's in a lot of trouble. Yeah, you know, for me, I think from, from a teammate standpoint, this is a distraction, right? And if you're the Dodgers, you had the Trevor Bauer story, you had the Julio Reyes story, and now this. It's yep. Year after year, there's something coming out of that locker room, man, and who knows what's coming down the pipeline. And you haven't, yo, know, finished the job either. This yeah. is a team that should have won yep. multiple yes. World Series talent-wise, and there's a lot of pressure on Dave Roberts, their manager right now. Uh, but as of right now, Otani is going to speak. So we'll kind of withhold some judgment on the situation until tomorrow when we can digest whatever it is that he and his team says today. He will likely just today. read a prepared statement, and he will likely not answer questions. That will be interesting. Yeah, depending on how they do that, I think a lot of people would find that unacceptable. I'm not saying it's a bad idea. It's probably the best idea. But if he's going to sit up there and you got the media there, questions are coming. Now, he does have the backdrop of he is not very good at right. English language just yet, right. which is why he has say. an interpreter. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. You yep. know, when, you, when you're when talking to, like you said, when you're talking to him and he, his interpreter is telling him something, the interpreter can say one word or one sure. s- sentence that's not what it Yeah, and I've always said. questioned that, but yeah. this is such a high-profile yeah. thing. There will be people who speak and understand the Japanese language sure. who are going to watch this today, right. and they're going to make sure that there's nothing that is misrepresented right. from the interpreter. That's for sure. Great, quickly, quick. Yeah. For me, uh, what is something that has to happen in this interview? I never placed a single wager. I never placed a wager on baseball. The money was stolen from me, and he needs an explanation of how the guy got access to his personal bank account. Oof. Because Oof. The, Oof. The, all the book he knows is, you owed me money, and I got the money. The right. book, you don't care where the money came right. from. Right. I got my money. We're good. The question is, how did this guy have access? If that's the story you're going with, that he stole the money, how did he have access to your personal banking information to send that type of money? So, very interested in what happens a little later on today. Number two, my man, my man, Aaron Rodgers, actually participated in an unauthorized biography that Ian O'Connor wrote about him. It's called Out of the Darkness, The Mystery of Aaron Rodgers. It is a 384-page thriller about my quarterback. He's the only guy in America that would participate in an unauthorized biography. And I can't wait to read it because I'm all in on Aaron Rodgers and the New York Jets. Yeah, no distractions, though. Yeah, no distractions. No distractions. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No no distractions. No distractions. It's going to come out right before the well, season. What could possibly right. be a no distraction? You can't stop a guy from writing the book. You don't have to participate. And this is why Aaron Rodgers is special. Because I'm sure a lot of people said bad things about him. Sure. You know, anonymous teammates and that kind of stuff. So the way this worked, as I understood it, Ian was trying to get him for months to agree to participate. And he wouldn't because it was unauthorized. And then Ian told him some of the quotes from some of the guys. And he goes, I'll sit down for two hours with you, and I'll respond to a lot of the stuff that's in there. So I can't wait to read this book. Oh, a little summer God. reading. And Timmy invited over to his house. So I'm going to go to the Hardaway residence. Yes. Oh, I'm yeah. going to sit back by the pool, yes. take a pina colada, yes. and read the book on Aaron Rodgers. Exactly. And have some barbecue. And have some barbecue. Like have some barbecue. Thank you, Timmy. Yeah, yeah. Appreciate that. There you go, Which Timmy. brings us to number one. one. We've kind of done this, so it might be a little bit of early. Texas A&M. <laughs> Had a shot. Yeah, had yeah. a shot to beat the one seed. Yes. And they dropped the three right here. Top of the key. Can you make it? Can you tie the game? Yeah. Yes, I can. Yeah. And then, of course, they, they go to overtime. The but I want you to focus on the inbounds pass. Yes. Thank you, Timmy. Because this might be one of the great inbound passes yes. in the tournament. That's right there. A 25-foot Bounce pass on the money. from the baseline around a defender against man-to-man coverage, yes. and he drops the three ball. Yes. Says Yahtzee in your face, and then they lose by five. Uh, and that's <laughs> okay. Yeah. But you know what? The, the guards can't go 15 for 48 from the field and four for 15 from the three-point line. Right. You know they got to come out and they had to, those two guys had to play a little bit better, and they didn't show up until the second half and. They lost. It's indicative of the tournament weekend that the best play we have is a team getting to overtime right. and then losing. Yeah, it was a bad, tough weekend. It, it, I mean, tough weekend. Well, well, it wasn't a tough weekend. Just yesterday, it wasn't no good basketball. Right, there was a the competitive top teams, basketball. All, yes. all, all, yeah, competitive. All the top teams did what they spoke to. Can, they went out there and yeah, blew out Duke teams. If you consider what Timmy just said, just real quick, 
In the first two rounds of this year, or the first two days, pardon me, of this year's tournament, there were more underdog outright winners than in any tournament, I believe, in history, right? Right. And then, if you go from that point to Saturday and Sunday, the favorites were 15 and 1 Ooh, yes. in games, just from the standpoint of winning outright or not. Right. So, for Thursday, Friday, it was upsets galore. Right. Saturday, Sunday, nope. all the favorites won except for one. So, there you go. And we have a guy upstairs, as you know, Gambling Mike, who put $100 Gambling on Mike. every underdog to win outright. He was up like a thousand bucks after Friday. He's now in the hole. <laughs> About 500 bucks because, you know, he's stupid. Um, <laughs> nice guy. He's stupid. That's all. In any event, much more in the tournament throughout this week as we get ready for Thursday and Friday. Yet again, uh, Robert Sala, the embattled head coach of the New York Jets, spoke this morning. You know, the coaches and GMs have their annual get together and uh, the press gets invited to it. And Robert Sala said something unthinkable in regards to the uh, New York Jets in this season. And it's pissing me off. <laughs> Good morning and welcome back to the car right. show. We have your early morning headlines and we start with that man Shohei Otani. Over the weekend it is announced that he is officially being investigated by Major League Baseball. He will face the media later today. Craig, what do you make of these developments? I think it's smart to do it as long as uh, you're going to be consistent with your story and answer questions. I don't think anyone's going to tolerate him coming out and just making a statement and you know, uh, saying, you know, during an investigation, I can't really speak to it. My focus is on baseball. Good night. Uh, and that wouldn't be smart. If you're going to greet the media, greet the media right. and be prepared to answer the three or four obvious questions. How did the guy get access to your account if your story is that he stole the money? When did you become aware that there was money missing? Did you know he had a gambling problem? Have you ever wagered on sports at any point in your life? Not that he's on trial right now, but he's on trial too right now uh, because he's the face of Major League Baseball. And it's okay if he gambles on other sports. You're allowed to as a Major League Baseball player. You can gamble on college sports. You can gamble on pro sports. Legally. You just can't gamble on baseball. So the notion of him gambling in and of itself is not a problem because gambling is so pervasive now. And all the players' associations have essentially the same rules. You can gamble on any sport you want other than your own. So it'll be interesting to see if the tact is, yes, I have dabbled. I've made some wagers, you know, kind of socially over the last couple of years when it became legal to do so. And I've only done it in states where it was legal. All right, maybe we buy that story. But I never bet on baseball. Maybe we buy that story. But the key thing to me is not even so much his press conference. The key thing is going to be when we read the details of the FBI interview with the bookmaker out in California. Because that guy's going to prison. And that guy most likely is going to do whatever he can to shorten his prison sentence. Because mm -hmm. that would make sense to most sure. people. And if he's got the goods on a prominent figure like Otani, and I want to be clear, according to what I've read, he had this bookmaker has told the authorities that whoever was making the wagers, whether it is Otani or the interpreter, he may not know who the source of the wager is, that they never bet on baseball. That's what I've read that the, again, the bookmaker has said to the authorities out in L.A. If that's the case, then this is going to be much ado about nothing. This is going to be about an unfortunate compulsive gambler who went down a bad road, got himself in heat financially, couldn't get out of it, and then allegedly stole the money to pay off the bookie. And that, then that becomes the story. Did Otani help him out, or did the guy steal the money? And regardless of the answer to that, as long as there was nothing wagered on baseball, Otani's clean, and he plays every game this year, and the story's a wrap. But to me, it's the tip of the iceberg of what is inevitable. There is going to be a major gambling scandal in this country, both at the collegiate level and at the professional level. And I can tell you, there is no doubt in my mind that there are professional athletes today that are gambling through a surrogate or a straw man, but are gambling on their own sport every single day of the week. And at some point, that's going to be a real problem for all four major North American sports and, of course, at the NCAA level as well. Right. So that's where we're at. All right, moving on. Craig? 
Yeah, I'm the head Reed. coach of the New York Jets. My buddy spoke today. Yeah, and he was asked specifically, will it be a failure if they miss yeah. the playoffs? And here's how he answered. Easy that answer. Yes. Um, I'll never say that. Oh. Uh, you know, like I said, we're put your head down, do the best you can, put your work in, and. Uh, Obviously, we all want to win games. We all want to go to the playoffs. We all want to win championships. That's That's been the goal since the day we walked in here and uh, felt like we were going to have that opportunity last year. It didn't happen. And um, this year is about picking ourselves up, putting our heads down, and just working. Craig, how disappointing is it that he won't even set the expectation <laughs> at the playoffs with this roster? I know we're on cable, but I can't share my true feelings with you <laughs> with using words that I'd like to use because I'll be fired if Let's I do that. But that's a job. disappointing <laughs> start to the 2024 season, which we haven't even had the draft yet. This is a moment for Robert Sala yeah. to do the what I think is the obvious thing. And this is the tone setter right now. And the tone should have been, you bet your ass it's a failure if we don't make the playoffs. Yes. We're out of excuses. And I've had legitimate ones in my first three years as head coach. I have not had a legitimate quarterback on my roster uh, since I became the head coach of the Jets. We accept that. That's why he's been given the fourth year without making the playoffs in the first three. But I believe you set a tone from day one. And that tone has to be anything short of of the playoffs is unacceptable. And the fact that you can't bring yourself to saying that is a concern of mine. Now, what he says publicly and what he says to the guys privately might be two different that, things. That's what I was going to just get to. Don't get to I was going to get to this. He can go in at the first day of practice and, say, and show them that and say, look, what I said back in March, that was some BS. I'm telling y'all right now, yeah. if we don't make the playoffs – we all gone. If we don't, if we don't get to the playoffs and go far in the playoffs, yep. we're all gone. So you, I'm let's get that out of our minds. That's what I said was totally utterly BS. Right. And let's come out here. But here's the problem. Let, but you, you, sometimes you don't have to say something like he that. He does. Like, no, not really. I'm gonna tell what, you why. Look, I understand his predicament. Maybe he don't want to say this because these guys are, you know, are fragile. A lot of these guys are fragile. Yeah, but but the crazy. You, me and Craig live this jet life, right? right? So we have a little, listen, right. this is a young outfit, right, with a lot of stars. Mm -hmm. There was a time where he had to carry their confidence and pretty much baby them. Mm -hmm. They're out of excuses. There is no more baby. And this team has been dragged from, from C to C. Right now, it's either do or die. From, from my standpoint. He knows that. You, yeah, from my standpoint, you not only tell this locker room to what you're talking about, but you have to let this fan base that suffered through years and years of an embarrassment. When they acquired Aaron Rodgers, there was an expectation this team was going to the Super Bowl. It did not happen. They won their first game with Zach Wilson. Outside of that, Zach Wilson was an absolute failure. Right. With that said, this defense carried this team. Robert Sala is the head of this defense. Like, let me Everything just, they've delivered. If I may. To, just to finish real Go quick. Ahead. I would say this. If you're Robert Sala and Craig, you're right on the head. Enough is acceptable but the playoffs. If we're not a top 10 offense and we don't dominate defensively, I'm going to be out of a job, and some of you may be out of a yeah, job. So this is an all-in situation. Dude, it's simple. Time. I'm a diehard Jet fan. been one for all 26 years of my life on this planet. And I can tell you something right now. All 26, I, I don't want to, all 26 that's years? That's right. I said it. Okay, I'm just I don't want to hear question. any more crap from this I just, organization. I just want to hear that you said that. Yeah, I said it. And okay, I'll tell you gotcha. something else. It's time. I, I, I don't like using this phrase because it's dated. It's time to man up and cut the bull crap no out. Pressure. You don't have to sugarcoat nothing to me as a fan. You don't have to kiss the players' asses and make sure everyone's feelings are okay. You come out and you say publicly, it's playoffs or bust. Anything short of the playoffs, and I will hand in my resignation because I don't deserve to be the head coach in the NFL anymore with the New York Jets. We don't actually. want to hear anything. We don't want to hear you sugarcoating it. We don't want to make sure that the players' feelings are okay. I want every player, all 53 guys on my roster to know one thing. We're not saying Super Bowl or bust because that would be unreasonable. We are saying you must make the postseason. If you don't, it is unacceptable. And I want the fans to hear me say that yep. because we're playing a silly game of – I don't want to put too much pressure on the guys. Damn that. And maybe you're right. Oh. I got fragile guys in the locker room, and things happen at the NFL, and injuries this and injuries that. You know what I saw last year? And the most I fragile saw, one is number 12. I saw the Cleveland Browns. <laughs> 
with Joe effing Flacco. Joe Flacco. Their fourth quarterback last year. I know they lost the game, but they got to the playoffs. Right. I didn't see my team do that. So I want my coach, and I'll call him later today and tell him this. I want my coach from this point on. You know what? I'm not pussyfooting around this anymore. I'm not sugarcoating it anymore. It's either you make the postseason or it's a failure. And I want his resignation letter ready to go if they don't. And if you call him up, he's going to hang the phone up. No, he won't. No, he won't. <laughs> no, he won't. <laughs> I don't want to hear that, Craig. I am, Craig I'm Craig. shocked that he <laughs> asked the question, is it a failure if you don't make the playoffs? And he says, I'll never say that. I will. Let me it's, say it's, it for it's, you. It's, that's disappointing. You know what he needs? You know what Robert Sala needs, my dear friend, my lookalike? He needs an interpreter. I'm going to be his interpreter. <laughs> he just has to go like this. <laughs> and I'll do the talking. What's the question? Yes. You bet your ass that if we don't make the playoffs, yep. it's a failure. <laughs> that's that's what it about is. about right. Yeah. He's not coming right. back if they don't make the playoffs. No, no, by the way, Joe Douglas isn't coming back. He's not coming back. Hackett. Hackett's not coming back. A lot of them are but gone. Craig, you, a, lot of the, a lot of what we saw this Sunday is just unacceptable. Talk about that Giants game, right? You're talking about a team that didn't throw the football with Danny uh, – to Tommy D. Tommy D, yeah. uh, if you will. And they almost beat the Jets. Everyone really? that game. So at the end of the day, you got to be you got to be honest with yourself. What the product was on the field for the Jets is not acceptable. Look, here's the, the deal. Aaron Rodgers is healthy. They make the playoffs by default. We know that. And they win the division because the Bills are not as good on paper. The Dolphins, of course, riddled with big injuries and yes. free agent losses. They're not as good. And the Patriots suck anyway. This is – look, I, I would go one step further. I got to win the division. I'm not messing around with, yo, am I a 10-win team? And am I, am I getting in or not? And I got to wait for the last Sunday night game of the year to decide. No, 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 no. I got to control my destiny. And I got a backup quarterback now in Tyrod Taylor. Should Aaron miss a game or two? Or God forbid anything worse than that. It is playoffs or bust. And that should be the mantra. Yo, Robert Sala gave me a T-shirt uh, that I wear from time to time. And the T-shirt says, positive vibes only. only. And I kind of like that. I like to live my life by the same tenant, where I like to be positive all the time, and I'm never negative, right? Well, the new shirt should be playoffs or bust. I agree. Period. Stop. I'll make sure we have those made for the crew tomorrow. Great. Moving on to our final headline that involves Willie's Pittsburgh Steelers. There we go. Yeah. Right now, the question was asked of Mike Tomlin of where exactly is your depth chart in the quarterback room? And he says that Russell Wilson is in pole position to be the starter. Here's what he said, quote, Russell's in pole position. I think his body of work justifies that. When it's time to compete, Justin will be given an opportunity to compete and will allow those guys to sort themselves out. Yeah. So there is, from the words of Mike Tomlin, a quarterback competition no, in not. Pittsburgh. He just said they're going to compete. They're not going to compete for the starting job. I guess uh, Fields can compete for the second spot out of the quarterback depth chart and not the third spot. Because what has Justin Fields ever done that would make you think that he's going to overtake Russell Wilson, a guy who's been in two Super Bowls, won one, and is a borderline Hall of Famer? It's craziness. Uh, I understand why they're doing it. And you guys have to remember, there's coach speak, and then there's facts, right? So use even the Robert Soft and coach speak, I'm not going to say that I'm not making the playoffs, but the reality is you better make the playoffs, right? In this case, all this is – is Mike Tomlin just reminding Russell Wilson, just because you're the best quarterback we got, just because you are the number sure. one starter on this team on the depth chart, we're going to push you. We're going to press you. We're not going to make it easy. We're going to put a hungry kid who's had a disappointing first three years of his career, who's trying to now hang on to the NFL dream. We're going to have that kid press you and press you. And at the same time, we're going to ask you also to teach the kid and take him under your wing and help the kid that wants to replace you become a better quarterback. I respect it. I get it. But if anybody thinks that Justin Fields has a chance of being the starting quarterback for the Pittsburgh Steelers week one, two, three, or four, uh, you're smoking your own stuff because it's not on the table. He, Russell Wilson would have to have a level of incompetence with the Steelers that I just don't think is possible no. for him to be upseated as the starting quarterback. So that or obviously an injury, which no one roots for, is the only way Justin Fields sees the field. But I'm telling you again, yeah. if I'm Mike Tomlin, I put Justin Fields on the field as a slot receiver. <laughs> 
I take advantage of that kid's athletic ability. I got two stud wideouts, and now that dude in the slot, I got a pretty damn Danny good offense. Ball, though. Yeah, I, I believe he can. You know why? <laughs> I mean, he knows, though. He's not. shooting. He's not. 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 Uh, for the Pittsburgh Steelers, it's, that's off the table. It's silly. Craig. Yeah, the bottom line, when you hired Arthur Smith to be uh, your starting offensive, not starting offensive coordinator, you hired him to be your offensive coordinator, man, you knew that Russell Wilson was going to give you the edge, right? Because you're talking about a defense that won you a lot of games, but now you have a running game in the offensive line. Now with Russell Wilson, you got a field general. The bottom line, Russell Wilson just has to, if he regressed or he looks like a shell of himself, they have a safety net in Justin Fields, but he's not going to start. It's By the way, that's not a safety net. Like a safety is. net is Tyrod Taylor, a proven veteran commodity that can win games. Justin Fields. So you're ain't saying a Tyrod net. Taylor is better than Justin Fields? Yes. No. All Greg, day, every day. Yes. Come on, yes. Craig. Yes. Tyrod Taylor is better than Justin Fields. I, I By the way, so. I want to be clear. I it's not so. even close. I he's in so. another stratosphere I, I, than I Justin so. Fields. I Greg, think he's better than him. You know, I like to cherry pick stats. Right? Yes. So we have a comparison. Oh, yours are ready. Mine are never ready. Between oh. Russell Wilson and Justin Fields, their stats are closer than Close. you think. That's closer than you think. Look at that. They've been, both been sacked too to many damn no times, by the way. It's no competition. There's no competition and there. Look at putting that numbers. up there is ridiculous. Why? When, when you about the last two seasons. Yeah, I know. And the first season in Denver, we know with Nathaniel Hackett, was a complete clown show. Fast, fast. And last year, they didn't have a running game at all. Their best runner averaged three yards a carry. And he had one wide receiver, no tight ends. And what was happening? And an average offensive Bears. line. Like, what are we doing? Yeah, what was happening? Six Chicago touchdowns. Listen, if, you guys, the Bears were stacked. if you guys want to make an argument that Justin Fields is a better quarterback, do it maybe like at lunch or something. No! And, you know, <laughs> sit down together and be like, you're so right, Jacoby. He's in. Oh, you're it so right, lunch. Come on lunch. Yeah, like, don't do it with me around. Like, you know what, Gordon's so wrong, and I'm so sick and tired of mistakes. And <laughs> he's at the <laughs> bad lunch. lunch. I'm so down crazy. with you. lunch. Yeah, here's the question. If you two go to lunch, I want to know who's buying. You are. Yeah, who are you talking about? <laughs> That'd be the best staff lunch I ever had. I'll, uh, here's 100 bucks. You guys can go without me. I would love that. Uh, listen, we got a great NBA action coming your way this week, which yes. Timmy will break down for us uh, starting tomorrow, of course. And the latest on any NFL news that comes out of these coaches and GMs meetings. And, of course, the Otani press conference all tomorrow on FS1. Thanks for watching.